What's up, everybody? Hey! We are here for your guys' entertainment, your poker entertainment. True. And maybe a little bit of poker education. A little bit. Just a little bit, though. Not too much, guys. Right. Let's not get crazy. We have about as much control over this thing as uh, anybody trying to direct a river with their hands. Uh, yeah, I haven't had much success yeah, trying I just, that lately. Yeah, I just stand in the middle and just kind of let the water pass. <laughs> And that's when I'm showering. It's, yeah, it's, it's true. It's true. It's a little crazy. <laughs> so tonight we do have a 5-5 five, five no limit game. Start out as a $200 min buy-in to a $1,000 max and then instantly goes to table six right. from there. Which means that you can buy up to the largest stack at the table. And what we've seen happen a lot in games like this is uh, shit hits the fan in the first couple yep. hands. Somebody stacks somebody else and so now one player has two grand and so the next guy rebuys for 2k. And you can see how this astronomically gets pretty right. crazy. So, guys, we don't really want to mess around too much. Let's just get down to the action and start uh, with this tea party already. Absolutely. Let's do it. So we're already going to jump in. So most people are doing a straddle at this table. Uh, it's going around. And looks like Day opens with ace-queen. Nobody really has anything. Folds to him. So you'll notice we see a lot of familiar faces at this table. Um, already pretty deep stack. Look at those stacks, right. guys already have a lot of three to five K stacks right. and it started out as a thousand max, yep. which means that I, we, we own a fan store and we just hit all the fans with shit already. Yes. <laughs> so if that's any sort of indication of where this game's headed, I like it. Yeah. And I was talking to a couple of the players at the table and, uh, you know, no, no spoilers, but it sounds like we have a couple good hands coming up good. pretty quickly. So it's always uh, nice to I, start the show. I think this is the way we're going to kick it off right now. Harlan here opens 40 with King-10 suited. Uh, we're going to call him Zion, comes behind here with pocket queens and makes the call, and Brian with ace-jack suited. Now, yeah. he does have button, he does have position, he's liking life right now. Uh, and Super Mario comes along as well. It's a me, a Mario! You're probably going to get a few of those tonight. I'm just a sucker for a good time. Wow, and I believe more, um, Adam was almost almost borderline priced in with like a deuce five. He would have binked uh, trip deuces here on the flop. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see... Okay, I'm a little surprised to see Harlan bet. Now, quick, bet. quick call by Zion here. And Sorry to interrupt you, but the thing with Zion is that it's going to be interesting because Zion's hand is severely under rep, being that he just flatted Harlan pre-flop. Right. Nobody's putting Zion on it. Oh, my God. Nobody's putting Zion on, well, definitely that. God, if you're Zion, how are you just like, don't move, act cool, <laughs> be cool? Well, he has the sunglasses on, so, you know, hopefully it, like, it concealed his yeah. eyes going to hold. Now, unfortunately for him, really not a lot for Harlan or Brian in this situation to, to really pay him off. But uh, you know what, Adam is probably thinking, oh man, I should have got in there with my deuce five, and he's about to see yes, bullet how dodge. Happy he was. Bullet dodge. And you know, in those situations when something like that kind of rolls out, and then I see that would have just got cooler, mm -hmm. I, uh, and that is why I don't play those hands from Ooh. those positions. Yeah. And yeah, we you saw that <laughs> that look from Adam. He's like, ooh. Yeah, right? You, know, you, give, you give yourself one of these, like, yeah. Ooh, glad I folded that. You gotta give yourself a pat on the back once in a while. Cody Moose 01 over there on YouTube, Donkey Puncher as usual. What's going on, guys? Yeah, take a look at these stacks. Adam at almost 5K, Day at 4K, Dave C at 3.5K. Our smallest stack on the table is almost the largest buy in that they could start with. Right. <laughs> Game on. Alright, so Harlan's gonna open from early position to 40 with a suited ace. I love it, dude. Harlan's just throwing out a little island love, you know, in his pick. He's just chilling. And Harlan steals from early position. There you go. It's the best place to steal from. Yes. I always make a joke like that in the tournament when I wake up with a big hand and I right. open, like, super... I mean, basically just ship it under the gun. And everybody's just like, oh, yeah, you don't have anything. I'm like, I love stealing when I'm first to act because nobody sees it coming. Right. And then somebody snap calls, and they're like, my jacks are good here. And I'm like, never, ever. Well, I had 7-6 <laughs> off suit. I had to call. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're priced in. Yeah, I always flop quads when I have 7-6 <laughs> off suit. So, guys, walking around the table, the red chips are fives, green chips are 25s, white chips are hundos. And I think that might be all we have in play. I know we have some 500 chips and some 1,000 chips, although I don't see any floating around quite yet. Yeah. 
Um, Cody Moose, uh, interesting you bring that up. Absolutely. Uh, what are our questions about thoughts of two players talking in a foreign language at the tables, and is there any rules in California about this? Absolutely. Uh, English only at the table, period. In fact, the majority of poker destinations, a lot of poker destinations around the world, are uh, basically English only at the table, you know what I mean? Dude, that's beast mode, dude. That's beast mode. Um, and, uh, and so at the end of the day, Unless you're in a foreign country where they might limit it to that language alone. Yeah, it's a big no-no, and it's a big no-no for obvious reasons. Um, somebody uh, just told me the other day that a player did something very similar, but it was extra sneaky. He actually leaned back on his phone, talking in a different language, pretending he was talking on the phone, but he was actually talking to another player at the ta on the other side of the table. And one of the other players knew the language, and the second he picked up on it, he was like, oh, hell no. Hell no. So yeah, that's a big no so, no. Yes. Absolutely. When you're in the hand, period, even if you have somebody sitting behind you and you know they know nothing about poker, you speak English only or nothing. Sure. Yeah, you know, at the table when you're in a hand. And now, you'll see that you'll see the line, you'll see the funny line arounders about that. I'm sure you just talk about pierogies and snow and right. shit, right? But but at the end of the day it doesn't matter. It's it's English only. It's just yep. it's a respect thing, it's a fairness factor, you just gotta do it. Tank, what's going on? Aw, Tank X. We can all relax, everybody. He's here. Be cool. Be cool. Now, be sure to let us know, you know, if you're not here, so we know to get, you know, worried and anxious. <laughs> I haven't played a lot of poker internationally, but speaking with other players, the majority of rooms uh, around the world, it's kind of, I mean, unless you're like in a really locals only kind of room in the middle of nowhere, a lot of rooms are English only. It's just kind of the standard. Yeah. So here we have a you know good hand you know shaping up. So we got Brian Ace King of Club Super Mario three bets with queens, and uh, so Brian's either going to decide whether he's going to raise here or if he just wants to see a flop or not. I know he's pl he's played with Mario a little bit, so he, you know, but I don't know if he's played with them enough kind of to know how aggressive Mario is. It's funny because obviously this is this is a short of. King's races, this is almost best case scenario for Brian, right? I mean, because he's at least he's flipping. Right. By applying the pressure here, though, he's really trying to rep King's races. He's going to make Mario think about it. This isn't a small four bet here. I mean, this is a four bet to 600. It's pretty healthy. Now Mario would have to put in triple what he's already in for, and he's going to go for it. Um, the weird thing is, let's see what this flops. If this flops all unders and Brian leads out, it could get interesting. Oh, 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 club. Oh, wow. wow. Okay, what so a flop. this. This is gonna be a shit show, guys. So obviously Brian here with two overs, nut flush draw, and nut straight draw. Mario with an over pair to the board here. Yeah, Mario has you know a little over 800 left, so you know he's already has less than the, what the pot is. So this is gonna get in. Pretty much no matter what they do at any point, it's gonna go in. Yeah, I I don't see. I mean, this is this is exactly all in. Boom, quick snap. Yeah. Yeah, obviously right there you saw Mario do a quick all in, quick call by Brian. Now this is a good Queen time of to Clubs point would be out, disgusting. We do have the option to run it three times on the stream, so we'll see if they exercise that option. Oh, King right there, but it, it actually puts Mario open ended now. If a non ace, oh wow, that is gonna seal it up right there. And it looks like they're just going to run it the one time. So Brian yeah. gets there on the turn and solidifies on the river. You know, I, it's one of those setups where no, no, neither player going anywhere. Right. See, Mario just smiles. He, he knows. Crap happens. Rick and Barstow, what's going on? Rick. Well, uh, right off the bat here, let's not waste any time. Within the first 10 minutes of the stream, we already have a 2.7K pot. Yes. Pretty healthy. I have a feeling that this is one of those games where even after the stream goes off, this game is going to have a wait list like 10 people deep, and it's going to go all night long. Right. Yeah, and, you know, I was kind of looking at the lineup, and, I was, you know, you always look at the dynamics, and you try to see, like, how it's going to go, and... Yeah, because players make the game. Yeah. Because you yeah. get a lot of crushers, and the game could actually play really small because, you know, as you're playing against higher levels, you kind of have to exercise a lot more pot control. Yeah. You know, and then when you have, you know, some players that are just ready to get it in mm -hmm. any time, that kind of all goes out the window. And yeah. it's Value City and Aggression. Value City. Yeah. Value Town. Aggression Avenue and Value City. <laughs> My favorite of all the addresses. <laughs> 
Yeah, actually, I was talking a little bit with Dave before the stream started, and uh, he said, wow, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, like, crushers at this table. Normally, you know, like anybody else, you try to look for the couple people you're going to pick on, and then I'm looking over there, and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't really know the couple people you're going to pick on right there. I can't really help you out much. I can tell you this, it's not going to be Day, Harlan, Mario. It's not, it's not going to be Adam. It's, you know, it's like, I don't... Yeah, but I mean, the thing to you know recognize if you're if you're Dave is you know, and he's starting to realize it more. And, and but one thing, and he's starting to take advantage of his image. Yeah. Now the problem with that, I mean, obviously that's a good thing to do, but you now need to also be aware of how your image is evolving of as course. you're taking you know advantage of your image. You can't just you have to take a, you have to take you, you have to take a uh, a random sampling of your image. Like every time you play, almost to see where people, because because it will change, right? right? If you start bluffing a lot more and you were you were yeah. normally a tighter image, now people are going to see that they're going to pick up right. on it, they're going to change. So you really, and this is what they talk about when they talk about shifting gears, guys, right? When they talk about being able to change gears and stuff, it's if you play the same way, if your play is super linear, it's it's basically open face play, right. and people are just going to pick you apart. And of course, I always pick a good time to uh, yeah, you walk over talk, when people talk get to the players. players. Right, that's hey, good. you get stacked here. Let me come talk to you. <laughs> hey, man, I hear you just lost like 1800 bucks. What's right? going on? <laughs> All right, so Aaron did make it 40 to go with Kings. Dave decides to call with the 10-9 uh, suited from the button, which... Is a pretty standard play. Oh, look at this. This is oh wow. This is all sorts of fun. Check this out. Open ended for Dave C here, along with potential backdoor flush. Top set for Aaron. Wee game on. God, if we see any sort of let's let's see how this spins. So he bets fifty. This is real still. This is small ball pot right here. This is really price of Dave in. He's gonna come along all day. Now the ace hits the turn. Doesn't really change anything. Doesn't give Dave any more outs and negates any sort of runner flush potential. So. Dave definitely looking pretty thin here. And if I'm Dave too, I don't even put a 9 or 10 in my list of outs that I would ever think is good here, you know. I'm really looking for, I was going to say that right there. No, yeah, I'm really looking for a queen or the 7, obviously. So I think Aaron could have gotten away on the turn with Benton a little bit larger than he did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you do worry about Queen 10 coming in, but when that ace comes in, it actually gives a lot of two pairs. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you can get a lot more value. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, yes, you you know, you got to worry about the Queen 10, but you do have the set, so you're... Yeah. You know, you're not really going anywhere. Maybe unless they just, you know, overship something. Not yeah, really it's good. one of those things where you're not going anywhere. You might, you don't, you don't necessarily have to get out of hand and start aggressively re-raising. But if somebody pops you once, you can just flap. But then when the board pairs on the river, all of your cares go away. Right. I mean, I like probably. I mean, you e you're even murdering Ace Jack on the river. It's yeah. like so perfect river for yeah. you. Speaking of Ace Jack here, Super Mario raises to 35. Adam makes the call with the mystery hand. Dave C with fours. Harlan with threes. Lots of fun hands already, like pocket pairs, lots of all sorts of fun stuff. I love that people know me so well that I basically just get random videos of like barcades sent to me. It's like, <laughs> guess where I'm at? <laughs> All right, so this aggressive three bet by Harlan here on the button. Obviously, he did it because he's on the button, and you can you can now rep a solid range of really beasty hands here if you're Harlan, or you just get a chance to pick up the pop uh, pre. In this case, we don't know what Adam has. We can see the Dave's ahead on a paired board with oh, there you go, Adam's got Ace King. So with with a paired board and an under pair. It's re you really hate life because there's so many cards that counterfeit you right. already. You're already drawing super thin. Yep. And I mean, but this is a good flop for him to you know continuation bet and even you know double barrel. Absolutely. Because it's you know it's going to be hard for anybody really to hang on, especially he's you know three bet from the button over an early position raise. So yeah. already that says your range is pretty strong. And it's just going to be hard for anybody to have five. Yeah, and I was watching that hand you know, develop as I was at the table and trying to kind of range people 
where they're at. So it's, it's well, you think, interesting. It, well, yeah, and it's funny you talk about range because I, when, when I was in there with Casey, she said, you know, it's, it's like, I mean, it's great if you can call out someone's exact hand, right? However, really more often than not, I'm, I'm just looking for a range. Like, could he have, what combinations right. could he ever have like a jack here? Could he have called this three bet with jack 10 or jack queen pre? Probably not, right? right? Could he have an ace jack? Okay, maybe, but I can beat that. You know, so really kind of figuring out where you're at. I mean, that's, that's what poker is, right? As you're narrowing it down, every single time you're betting, there should be a purpose behind it. You should be probing for information. You should try to figure yep. out, okay, this is why I'm betting this. So when he, so many people like, they raise for information, and then they get the information they want when somebody three bets raises back, and then they still call. And I'm like, right. you got the information yeah. you wanted, and you you just didn't use it right, you know? Yeah. And then when like when you're in the hand, so like my thought process was watching that hand develop. You know, Mario raised from early position, you know, so it's a pretty strong range. Adam, I think, is right next to him and, you know, calls. And so, you know, you're kind of thinking like, well, I think Adam would raise like queens, tens, jacks, maybe not tens, he might call with that. Uh, you know, and I thought he might raise sometimes with ace-king, just kind of depends. And so then, when, you know, and so he's kind of like more like queen jack, suit is, those kind of hands. But now once he calls a three bet, now he, you can kind of remove some of those queen jack hands and put them on like higher level pocket pairs, you know, higher like ace king, ace queen kind of hands. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then once he, you know, check bolts to the bet there, like I think he would at least feel one street with eights, nines, tens. You know, so you, you kind of start like you know, narrowing down and like eliminating parts of people's ranges as the action continues. So guys, I did a quick little uh, rough math head tally of the chips in play. I think there was about 17k-ish in play right now. Uh, and again, our short stack, uh, I believe it's Corey, is at 900 something dollars, which pretty much started out to be our biggest stack you could originally buy in for. So prepare for blast off, guys. Rick, are you still hanging out or did you take off? If you're still hanging out and taking off, see you later. Come back soon. If you're hanging out and I said hi to Rick Barstow. Stay out. Stay, stay what up. It might be past his bedtime. You know, Rick likes to get that early beauty sleep. Yeah, you really got to get on your uh, plastic covered couch and uh, make sure you get in your episode of Matt Locke or Murder She Wrote. And uh, nice glass of warm milk. One of those shows. Just tuck in at the end of the night. You know, at 7 p.m. Microwave milk. <laughs> Microwave. So you get that little little film that you got to peel off. I think I just threw up a little bit. Yeah. I remember someone doing that, and I was like, that's not for me. I There's just so many things wrong with that. I'll just leave it at that. I, uh, over to Brian here, exercising his right to party on the button with six deuce of hearts. Makes it 40 to go. Gets it through. Easy money, guys. Bet it to win it. Yep. And that's why you raise a, a large range of hands on the button when it's folded to you. People are just going to fold it. Good old day, and you know what? Uh, you know, with day, I believe he's got maybe a little ladybug card protector hiding down there. We saw Day's ladybug thing. He had a little ladybug statue before, and we made a comment about it. And uh, then I saw him post something like on his Facebook, something about like, oh, I, I finally it came, and it's like this like ladybug fan parking homie sign or something. I'm like, so that, that's a thing. That's a, that that is his thing. And so we thought like, okay, maybe it had some sentimental value. Right, right. Dude just digs ladybugs. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nope. Ladybugs are chill. They eat all the other parasites off the plants. Kind of looks like everyone kind of, you know, is right now is trying to play their A game. Uh, you know, we've seen a pe couple people loosen up a little bit, you know, open wide and late position when it's folded to them. But in in good games, this is what you see a lot of times. You see either like an open or maybe a couple limps and a raise, and then it just takes down the pot. You know? Yeah. And, it's usually a sign of some decent players at the table. Sometimes it could be card distribution where just nobody really having anything to yeah, play. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, if it's a tough lineup like this is, you know, people really have to be very selective about the hands that they're continuing to the flop, especially yeah. when out of position. Absolutely. You know, looking at the amount of money on this on, already in play on this table, I know real time, I think they were only running at this point in the show about an hour. Um, you know, between pre-stream and then on the stream, and just I want to know how that worked because I, I guarantee you it went like this: like somebody doubled through somebody else, and then some guy completely uninvolved in the pot just like whips out another thousand and adds yep. on, whips out another thousand and adds on. <laughs> yeah, I, and, and in fact, we saw Adam do that one time. I think he was running really dry on one of these streams, 
and he wasn't involved in any hands. He got no hands to play, and I think that every time somebody would get a stack higher than his, he would just slide some more on the table. Yep. So I think throughout the stream, we saw him increase the stack by four grand, but literally almost never play a hand. Yeah, <laughs> and that happens, you know. And what's great about the table. You know, matching the stacks at the table is, you know, exactly that reason. It's like you could be card dead for hours and hours, and then win one massive pot. Yeah. You know, and now you just have a, you know, a huge amount of profit for the session, or you recovered from, you know, a negative. Or session. you totally get rivered, and then you go home thinking, crap, <laughs> I should not have done that. All right, so Brian's coming in for ten, and uh, Mario is as well nine ten suited here, and he is gonna pop it up. And he sees Brian's, you know, been opening a lot of hands, so he's going to pick some, some, opening up his range to. Oh, God. How good does it feel when you raise with a hand like 9 10 suited and flop two tens here? Not much, unfortunately, uh, for Brian to continue and, and give Mario really any action. Yeah, you would think that this is a good, you know, decent flop for for Brian to continue, you know, for Mario, yeah. but we see he was opening line, but decided to defend his open. What's Cap going on, Captain Kirk? Captain Kirk 81, what is going on? Yeah, got to grind the roll and come up here and play sometime. If you guys just caught the game, uh, was it Monday night? Was it Lady No Muck was in the game? Yeah, it was Monday. Lady No Muck was in the game, um, which was really cool. She's always in the chat, always hanging out, um, always a big part of the show. So the fact that she was here and played the game, it was great. It was like, hey, putting like an actual person to a screen name. Super cool. So Captain Kirk, make sure you come say hi when you come in. Definitely. And also, uh, you know, check out the, the calendar on Stones, you know, because every month there's typically at least one or two, one, three games that, you know, that provides people a good opportunity that are, you know, kind of get into the game to get into on the stream, work on your game without having to set aside three or four thousand dollars. Yeah, and you know the funny thing is I know, well not funny thing, but a, a lot of players, you know, getting poker coaching and stuff like that and evolving your game is getting really popular these days. Um, I specifically have heard instances where uh, coaches have told totally Lawn Car obviously coaches a little bit and everything else and he says go play on something like Stones Live and then I can we can literally watch your footage yep. together. We can yep. go back and find all the leaks in your game and figure out why you, you should have played the hand differently in right. certain areas. And additionally, you know, because live poker itself is so uh, kind of game flow dependent. Mm -hmm. Something like a live stream really allows you get a lot the, of the, the nuances. Yeah, you know, you get timing tells on people, you know, sizing tells, things that might kind of just uh, get washed out when you're trying to relay the information. Especially when you're new, you don't really relay information all that well. Yeah. And you're like, I think it was a three, or I don't know, maybe it was a seven of hearts, I don't know. So check this out, this is pretty sweet. So this, this is like some solid poker here. So Aaron is our pre-flop raiser making up 35. Then uh, Zion actually checks, Aaron C bets out, and that's what Zion's picking up on. So Zion makes a great check raise, trying to rep a beast mode jack or something. Uh, and Aaron makes the call here, does have the flush draw and gets there. Now on the turn, did Aaron, is it Zion first to act, I believe? Yeah. Yeah. So he is now gonna fire. 325 it looks like. Yeah, three and a quarter. It's about two thirds pot. So at this point, if you're, uh, I'm just going to call him Z because I'm terrible at pronouncing people's names. So if you're Z and you get called here after you check raise, flop, lead turn, you just need to shut it down on the river. There's really and, nothing yeah. you can hit. And so now Aaron calls here. Yeah, it really nothing, it's sort of a double board pair. Aaron doesn't really care what comes on the river here. I think Aaron's going to play his hand semi-cautiously. Here's the problem with Zion. He's, he's set himself up to be in a really tricky spot where he can only bet it to win it. Him checking here, Aaron is going to fire 99% of the time regardless of his hand. Yeah. I mean, literally, regardless of his hand, Aaron's going to fire. Um, and so in that case, it's kind of disguised bet here on the river, but he's going to go for value, but Zion's never going to come along for anything. So Yeah, I mean, you pretty much have to bet. You know. a, hand, a hand that would beat your hand would never, and I actually really yeah. like this over bet. Unfo it, I, if Zion had any piece of if Zion obviously had a jack, I think he makes the call. If he had any sort of pocket pair, I think he makes the call. I think Aaron made his river bet look. He overbet it to look a little bloated, bluffy, and I like it. Yeah, I mean, it was just basically a standard pot. Yeah. You know, bet left. And, you know, based on Z's stack, if he's going to, if he has anything, he's just going to shit that river, you know, so. 
you know most likely if you're if you're uh, Aaron, you're just gonna bet out and it's gonna fold. But either way, you still have to bet your hand. Because especially once you checks are good. And by the way, this session of Stones Live brought to you by Skittles Sweet Heat Edition. Not really, actually. I just tried them. Uh, they're interesting. I don't know what. I don't know how I feel about them. <laughs> they're not really our sponsor. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> And that's when we got sued. Damn it. They're like, we want nothing to do with this show. <laughs> we did not endorse this. All right, so Brian here, under the gun straddle style, uh, ends up raising it to 60. And sweet little flop here for Zion. Definitely being stop pair. Might be relatively play kind of cautious here, just like a check call line because of Brian's pre-flop raise. Brian did bink the nine, but bink the next best thing. With Zion flatting there, though, Brian's not slowing down. Zion checks, and Brian is gonna keep applying the pressure. Zion, Zion's not buying. He's saying, "Prove it, dude." So, and this is something that might kind of trick Brian. Like, you know, being a, a live player, Zion's kind of snap call, and a lot of times yeah. when people snap call, that's indicate. That they're going to call anything if you keep buying. Well, not even that. It's just usually they have like some kind of draw. Yeah. You know, so they're they don't have to think about where they're at. They just know if I hit, I win. Okay, fair. So enough. I don't need That's to a think. Solid, solid so idea. he's probably because of that timing tell thinks that Zion could be on a draw. So he thinks that Zion has showdown value. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, he might bet his hand thinking he's good. You know, like. Yeah. Honestly, when Zion checks the river, you're almost thinking like, okay, well, crap. Did you actually have the draw and you missed it? And, right. and could I actually go for like weird, awkward, thin value right. with my nine here? Right. And Brian was probably a little bit shocked to see an ace. Yeah, he's just like, wow, okay. Or, you know, so the snap calling thing, for me, it's indicative of one of two things, right? It's indicative of exactly like you said, and they have a draw. The other thing is exactly what he had, which is, I mean, in this case, he had better than most times I right. see it. He, but basically, I have, like, a top pair, no kicker. So I'm just going to, like, call and hope right. it's good. Yeah. And that's kind of like, okay, I call, okay, I call. Yeah. Okay, whatever, is this good? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the key line there is just a hand that they don't, there's no decision for mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's not a lot going on. They yeah. just want, honestly, they're just trying to get the showdown. Yeah. And whatever, it whatever it takes to yeah. get the showdown, that's what they're doing. Stones Life Poker says, great games here at Stones. Um, I want to say that they might be a little biased, but they're not wrong. They are not wrong indeed. Sacramento has some amazing action players. King's here for Corey. I believe he's our resident short stack at the table. Definitely looking for the double. Um, and Corey came in, made it 60 to go. Brian, oh, all sorts of fun playable hands. Look at these other hands here. So Brian comes along. Um, I believe Adam comes along as well. Now over to Dave C. I mean, you're, you're clearly getting the odds to come on in there. Even if you don't have the best hand, you're gonna come along. All right, so six, four, six on the flop. That is a lot of sixes for Adam, known as quads. God, that feels good. Now, and the thing is, it's so sick as if you're Corey, you gotta be feeling really solid on this flop. Yeah. But that kind of betting, you're not thinking there's gonna be a lot of sixes in somebody's range, or fours for that matter. And even if they have a four, you're still murdering their world. Right, and so I think Adam would expect, you know, Corey to bet twice here. Sorry, so. look, look at Adam's odds, greater than 99%. I love that. Right. <laughs> it's like, good luck. So Adam, I think, is gonna be going for the uh, turn check raise, because again, on this kind of flop, you would expect most hands to be betting twice. And again, you're still really loving this if you're Corey, not a lot going on, nobody re-raised you, you can't put anybody on any sort of hand like Jax. Um, I mean, you, you just, it's a matter at this point of, and, and the poor Corey too. Adam is one of our big stacks here. Corey's the small stack, he's thinking, this is the hand that I double right here. This is the yeah. hand. Yeah, know? and it's gonna go all in right now. Okay, Jarloon, what's going on? Just in time to watch Adam just bink quads. So now he bets 300, and Adam knows, obviously, Adam, Adam knows he has him at this point. He's just thinking of, okay, whatever, max value. <laughs> I think once Corey bets 300, he's only got 365 behind. Adam knows the rest get, is getting right. in no matter what. Adam could raise here if he wanted, but it really doesn't matter. Adam could just flat and watch Corey stuff it on the river. It, either way, he's going to get the last money. But here's the thing. Just get the money in now. You don't want some scary card to get. Yeah, if an like, ace peels. Yeah, that might shut I just figured because Corey's already so dedicated to this pot. And here, here it comes. Yep, yeah. all in. And this is unfortunate. And now Corey's probably thinking, great, you binked like ace jack. 
right. like you called with a couple of overs and you baked a jack and I still have you crushed. And Corey's gonna see the bad news. Hey, Rick and Barstow, bringing up the obvious Kings lose in Sacramento. Go figure, Kings lose at Stones. No surprise there. It, it seems to be in every, like, an odd, was this 2018, an even year kind of a thing. In 2016, Kings did horrible. 2017, they did yeah. pretty well. And Queen on the River was a good, wow, look at that. Quads on 11. And, you know, I, I actually kind of like that Corey just took his time uh, before he made the call on the turn. Right. So many players just snap call. Right. And Corey actually waited for a second. And, and I mean, he's not going to fold, but he just wants to play it out in his head like, okay. Because, and, I, and I'm in the same boat. Even if I know I'm going to, like, call, sometimes I'll sit there and I just, just give me a second to try to figure out if I can put exactly where you're at. Right. I'm like, what hand do you have here? You know? And I mean, I've said it multiple times. Give yourself time just to run through your options. Yeah. Even if, like you said, it's a no-brainer. Just give yourself a moment. You might have missed something. Mm -hmm. There's been times I I knew I had the absolute best hand, and I was blinded to the fact that the turn of the river completely changed something. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I had a set and I missed the straight that was out there. A prime example of a player I know who does it on the regular because I've talked to them about it is actually Jeff S. Jeff Sardell, who's played on the stream before. And he definitely takes his time when it's a bet to him. I mean, a lot of times it's a similar scenario where he's got a really great hand and a lot of players would just snap call, but he takes his time. He's just like, give me like 10 seconds to just think about it. Because I want it, because he goes and he replays every street in his hand and says, like, what do you really have? Where are you at? Donkey Puncher said uh, sixes are Adam's favorite hand now. He actually cracked aces with it apparently for 40k last week in a different spot. Uh, Adam, that sixes are definitely Adam's hand. It's man. probably a one two game. Yeah, for 40k. For 40k, one two, you know, standard. Seven behind, I mean, some, some players are adding on seven behind over there. Was that Dave? That was Dave, yeah. Yeah. And this is what we talked about earlier, guys. When somebody wins a big pot, all the other players are like, sweet, I can buy in for more. And that's why these games get extra, extra bloated and fun. Sometimes bloated can be fun. <laughs> all right, so Brian here from the button with King Jack makes it 65 to go. Adam finds a call with Ace Jack. And over to Zion here. It feels like a little gamble. A couple green chips, let's do it. Obviously, Zion dominating the club department here. So, a little something for everybody here. Adam actually has a wheel, or, I'm sorry, a draw to Broadway with a straight if a 10 wants to peel. Zion thinks bottom pair and Brian with top pair. Pretty solid kicker here. I think Brian probably bet that one. Oh, sizes down a little bit. I would have thought you'd bet a little bit larger, you know, being that it's a pretty connected board. There's going to be yeah. a lot of hands that you can get value from, a lot of draws. A lot of ace-jack tens could peel off there. I mean, there's right. there's all sorts of random hands. And look at that. Oh, wow. Ace-jack would have been disco for, what was it, Adam, I think? But now, uh, and we saw Zion calling down Brian before, and Zion maybe trying to take the hero call line again. I think this board now is getting so coordinated that Zion should find an easy fold here when Brian bets. Yeah, you got to think what river is good for you. Yeah, before. there's, I mean. That's about it. Yeah, even if you hit a six, all you're doing is check calling and yeah. keeping your fingers crossed. Like, that's, <laughs> like, you're not. So yeah, let's take a look here. Bob Craft, what's going on? All right, so a quick ad, if I'm if I'm close in the range, I think is about 22, 23k now. So we've already add, we've already increased the money in play since we started by at least 5k, and it's been 30 minutes into the stream. <laughs> Game on, right? Sarah in the booth? Who is that? No. no. I just throw out random names. I go for it. That is Rebecca. Rebecca. Very similar. She is her, uh, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca's a solid player. She's actually lots of fun there. Who's in the dealer box? Um, she loves playing mixed games. She loves playing Omaha games. You know, they told me a funny story, actually. Uh, for those of you who've been to Stones before, uh, Bear and Kristen in here, uh, floor and dealer and dealers galore, right? 
Um, they were out and they were visiting our good friend Sean McCormick. Oh, nice. And they were at the Aria and they ended up playing this crazy, crazy mixed game table that was literally just all industry people. It was them nice. and like a couple dealers there and one of the floor men there and they, and they said it was ridiculous. They were calling the most crazy. They were like... But Doogie, but Doocy, <laughs> High Low, Triple Dry, right. and they were just combined. Like, just making up games. Name, just... name four or five random games and throw them yeah. together. It was like when we played Drama High yeah. and crap. And I told her about that too. I brought that yeah. up. I'm like, dude, what about Drama High? And they were playing this. They played a lot of five card Omaha too and some yeah. other stuff mixed in with. They played like, they played five card Omaha double board where two complete full boards only high and each board split half the pot. And That's I'm like, crazy. oh my god, I can't. It, it was just super DJ and like spew money fun time. Yeah. I want to do like a, a three game combo so that every pot split into three different, you know, three pots. Oh my god. Just watch how terrible the, everything turns out. All right, so once again here, Adam is our big dog after that huge pot he won earlier with quads. Uh, 5.7k, followed by Day at 4.9k, and Day really hasn't been involved in too many pots, but he definitely keeps adding on every time somebody else stacks up. And we're going to see that a lot tonight. Yep. Which is great. Let them do all the grunt work to actually grind the stacks up, and then any of you guys watching can just come in and just buy in for the largest stack and stack them right off the bat. First hand. Boom. Yeah, I think uh, I, I played in the Bronington Friends, like, you know, after I was in the booth, and then walked up to after the stream ended and somehow there was a seat open with nobody on the list and I couldn't believe it so I sat down before somebody realized you know the air oh that's right yeah yeah and uh, played I don't know about 45 minutes yeah and I, about I, I think I saw that yeah yeah this. and then you were forced to get up and you're like oh yeah. sorry guys I gotta go well the game broke at that point yeah I was like oh it's so nice to look walk, look sit down and just so start hitting hands. So Aaron from the cutoff here with seven eight suited makes it fifty to go. Dave finally finds a hand on the button with fives. Corey, who we saw unfortunately run his kings in the quads earlier, now wakes up with queens, and all I'm sure he's thinking is, please be good this time, please be good. So he three bets of two hundred. Back over to Aaron, who's gonna let it go. Now over to Day with fives. Heads up set mining for basically four X the bet you're already in for. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see a fold there. And I think Corey is totally okay with folds around and right. will take that extra money all day. Yeah, and Corey's just not deep enough to, you know, to just only set mine there. So once again, you guys are watching Stones Live. Uh, make sure you click that follow, heart, subscribe button on Twitch and or YouTube. We're here with you at least every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, but click that notification button because what's going to happen is when we go have all of our big events here in April over the next couple weeks, we're going to be broadcasting like every night. Final tables go live whenever the hell we decide to hit the final table. So you'll get a notification. I mean, we've had final tables that didn't even go live until 11 p.m. at night. We have East Coast viewers chiming in, and they're like, 2 3 a.m., I just got done party. And now yeah. I'm gonna watch some stones live. So make yep. sure you click the notification button. Yeah, and you're not gonna want to miss, you know, the lineups that we have coming oh. in April. You know, this month is just crazy. Yeah, we'll talk about it after the next hand, but the spring classic coming up is awesome. All these fun coordinated boards here. Ace Jack, 10, couple of hearts. Brian always has a piece of it here. He's got mid pair and a straight draw. Dave C with the same straight draw. Mario with a bunch of unders. Well, checks around. I think if you're Mario, go ahead. I know it got checked to you twice, but just go ahead and keep on checking. At this point, somebody has you beat. You're not going to get them to fold anything. Mm -hmm. You do have a little shutdown value if you somehow happen to be good. There you go. Shows it to win it. So, guys, uh, coming up, the Stones Spring Classic. It's going to be April 13th through April 22nd. We have Alex Bell Hughes, Jason Somerville, Andrew Nimi, and Kevin Martin in the house. It is going to be absolutely yes. rad. It's going to be like the best nine days of poker ever. It's going to be huge. Uh, so it's going to kick off on Friday, April 13th with the Win the Button, a popular game here. Um, then it goes to the Chip Amplifier the next day there on Saturday. Wow, they're actually all popping up like that. He's on point. And then Assassin's Bounty there on Sunday, April 15th, followed by the classic Mix Max game, which I want to talk more about. Uh, and then we have a bunch of satellites into our main event following all those days after that. It's going to be fantastic. Our main event, 150000 guaranteed in the prize pool, and I personally will guarantee, not really, don't hold me to it, but I'm imagining that 150 is going to be pushed closer to 200 yep. with the buy-ins easy. Yep. Battle of the Ace Kings here. Day, Ace King suited from the hijack makes it 40 to go, and Dave C makes the call. 
Brian with threes and Mario with fours. How do we, every hand we have like a couple of big cards right. and a couple of pocket pairs. The deck is cooperating tonight. And we have a set alert. Brian gets some. Um, bottom set for Brian here. Not much going on for Mario. He did miss. Now, Day and Dave both with Ace King High here. Day with running flush potential, though. Yeah, I think Dave, even though it checked to you, it's okay just to check back here because Day was the pre flop raiser in late position. So, early position, people are going to be checking all their made hands to him. So you kind of have to worry about them. Hey, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, K. Jarloon says, uh, I love every Stones event, but I do love when you two are on because I learn like crazy. Hey, that's good. I don't know if we're teaching you good ways of poker or bad ways, but either way, we're, we're, we're talking about it. And set is good for the pot. So guys, what I was talking about, that classic mixed maths tournament here coming up. I don't know if I have the actual flyer for it. Maybe we can throw that up there. But long story short, they redraw. It starts as an eight-handed tournament. There it is, eight-handed tournament. And then they actually, after registration, they redraw 48 players for six-handed play. And then when you get down to 24 players, they redraw again for four-handed play. And then the final eight players play heads up. And what's extra cool about this is that you get to keep your same stack all the way through. Right. So you could essentially go into the heads-up battle, and the person you could be matched up against, you could already start out out-chipped 5-1. to one. Right. It's freaking rad. Well, and it's great because in most tournaments, I mean, you're, you have to get aggressive as the blind levels go up. You know, we know that. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, people really start kind of being a little mild, you know, because now it's like every raise, like, means something, you know? Yeah. There's less light opens. And so the nature of shorthanded, though, is, you know, people have to really mix it up. So now a raise doesn't just mean, like, king, queen, plus. Yeah. You know, now a raise just means, you know, two suited cards or, you know, so now you kind of get a little bit more playability. Stephen Young, what's going on? Um, let's say it's only 5.7k stack this week uh, at least three at 10k last week uh, Give it time man. I know you're just catching up, but we have already increased uh, five to seven K in, in play on the table since we actually started and in fairness uh, And I said it last week, you know, because I was in the booth for that that mayhem on Wednesday uh -huh. and there was five people of the nine people at the table that if you were to have one of them at your table, you're, it's an amazing You're lucky. Table. You're feeling good, right? Right, right. And when you put all those guys together... Oh, it, is. it was just it's, ridiculous. And every it's, it's pot the was 3K. It's the equivalent of taking a nuclear whale bomb yeah. and then putting five nuclear whale bombs together. That's then, a real thing. Yeah, and then the other you know, four good players have the money to just keep matching. So it was an amazing, amazing game. Rick, what's going on? He's asking if anybody's home. We, we just don't really know if he's, you know, if he has Alexa up and going, and Alexa <laughs> is you know, actually putting stuff onto his chat. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Young was like, yeah, that game was insane, straight up. I, I'm, whenever you find yourself in those games, it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. It's a blessing because you can have the op ability to make so much money. It's such a great game. And you also have the ability to get buried. Right, but the stress that is caused in those kind of games like takes about four or five years off the end Oh, of for life. sure, for sure, for sure. That's what I tell people. I, you know, I'm like, and the problem is that people are like, oh, well, I have enough money. I could hop in a 2.5 or a 5.5 or whatever. I'm like, well, the problem is this, <laughs> is that all it takes is one of those bad runouts, the Kings versus right. Quad Sixes. Yeah. All it takes is one of those hands and when you get buried two to five K and you can't afford to reload to get it back, right. you're just you're you're playing with scared money and your toast. But the nice thing about that game is the money you will have an option and an ability to get that money back. Yeah. Every pot is worth winning in that hand that game. I mean so far in this game too, like you know, most pots have been pretty substantial. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, deck cooperation today. And I love it when my deck cooperates. Yeah. I prefer when it cooperates for me just a little bit better than the next guy. <laughs> hey, yo, we. Max value. Yeah, Poker Hooker says we were playing 5525 all night last week. Just a good old 5 5 5x five right. straddle. Right? There we go. So Aaron here, three bets up to 235. Mario does come along with ace queen. 10 high board. We don't know what Aaron has. Mario with two overs in position right now. But Aaron, our original three better here, I would imagine he's gonna probably fire out a C bet. And he's reaching for some whites, those are hundreds. 
Let's call it 250 to go. Little half pot bet here. And wins it. See right there. Oh, and he had the same hand, ace queen. Once he went with oh, I love it. I love it. Aggression pays. Yeah. And it's a good hand to you know continue. He does have the ace of diamonds there, so you know he blocks some of the draw, you know, bigger draws that people be, could be continuing with. Has a little more equity for you know backdoor you know, running. You know what's funny? I, I uh, you know poker hooker says uh, we were playing five five twenty five last night, and I'm just thinking you know or all night last week. You know, it always kind of cracks me up. I think to myself, when I go outside and I see uh, cars in the parking lot that are like independent, like a, like a pool service or pool right. cleaning service or a carpet cleaning service or a solar company or something like that. And I just think, if you got buried tonight at the tables, when you go and give a quote tomorrow, is it going to be like 30% higher? <laughs> I mean, like, like, I know last week I cleaned your pool for 100, wow. but today it's 300 because it was a bad night for me at the tables last night. I feel like uh, people that do solar are like the new new jackpot winners yeah, yeah because yeah. there's so many incentives now that you know they just make so much money as as a business you know that if you're you know an owner you have some some amount of money that you're able to play this game yeah on. yeah so uh aaron here with kings uh three betting again pre nobody wants anything to do with it so he won the last uh hand with ace queen same hand as uh, mario there but nobody got to see it, and then he three bets again with kings, and nobody wants to see it, so here we go. Um, I don't see a lot of run good salads behind any of these players yet. We gotta step it up. I mean, it is the worst kept secret about the stream. <laughs> yeah, trust me, we bring it up every stream. All right, so Brian raises early position to uh, 55. Mario is going to re-raise with aces. God, what? okay, so you know what I love so far about this stream is that we've seen so many solid hand matchups. This is normally what you see in a, in a hyper-edited down version of like a right. larger tournament at the WSOP yep. or something like that, you know what I mean? You see all these crazy hand matchups. This is just a live cash game. We're not editing anything out. Every hand is like this so far. Yeah. And it's great because, you know, there's so much dynamic already between Brian and Mario. And then I think one thing, if you're Brian, you start to kind of define your three bet range. You know, yeah. you're, when you three bet the ace king, you don't three bet ten, or, you know, four bet tens here. So I think it's one thing for him to kind of look into. The jack's now, actually a yeah. really great card because. Now, now that, you're thinking, like, dude, you don't have a jack, and my aces have to be good here. Right. Right? And then Brian also thinks, you know, that that's good for him, too, because now it takes ace-jack out of play, and they check-check, which is a nice check back by This Mario. is such a setup. Now they actually put the full house on the board, and both players are thinking, I have you crushed, and you don't right. know it. And, and Brian thinks that with Mario's stack, he's not going to be checking aces, kings, queens, you know, so he thinks he's good. Yep, and Mario shits, Brian insta snaps. Which, you know, isn't much more than the bet he put out. Exactly. And, you know, uh, Mario's getting a little rebate because you saw Mario get involved in a big plot earlier to Brian and definitely shipped yeah. it all over to Brian. So, so uh, that was actually a really good job of Mario recognizing, you know, uh, his stack ratio to the pot. You know, so he knows that he can get it in on any given street. He does not need to shove now. He shoves yeah. now, Brian might, you know, be able to fold and probably will fold. Yeah. But that he checks back is just, you know, great. Now it yeah. takes makes Brian think, okay, maybe I was the king. <coughs> Alone for cards, what is up, fellow DJs in the house? What's going on? I like it. What is this, Steve online Young. poker? What is this? <laughs> what is this, a school for ants? Well, it's pretty funny, you know, we talk about online poker and stuff, and that's, and so many people, you see, and just purely from the sheer volume of hands, you see some crazy crap online, on, right. on online poker, right? But I almost, some sick part of me loves as like a public service announcement that you can see it on here. You'd be like, it happens in real life too, guys. Right. It's not like some magical internet poker fairy comes and like screws with your deck. I swear, this happens. Right. I don't know. I still feel a little safer uh, with on or with live poker versus online. Just, 
fucking ads. Oh, so do I, for sure, for sure. There's I mean, less, there's less bots, you know. I was gonna say, here's, here's the deal. At the end of the day, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna, dude, being a, if you have any sort of technical knowledge, it's very easy to see where there's all sorts of leaks and potentials for setup of, you know, all everything from collusion right. to bots to, to so behind the scenes. For some reason, like, cards, all but. these online sites, they have this money-making machine. Why would you not do everything to protect it? Yeah. It's like the customer service across the board, you know, with maybe a couple of exceptions of smaller sites, is kind of terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than take care of a possible situation, they want to just you know, be like, hey, let's not draw attention to it. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like generally the, the approach they take is more of like a sweep it under the rug PR right. approach than actually fixing it. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Brett Green chiming in says, uh, actually, uh, live at the bike streaming now too. I think the players at Stones would crush them, comparatively speaking. If he's watching the two streams, this table is way stronger. Um, lots of action at this table too. It says, we'll be down for the Assassin's Bounty. Can't wait. Neither can I, buddy. The Assassin's Bounty is going to be sweet. Yes. And the, st the final table for the Assassin's Bounty is so much fun. I actually, I, I cashed the Assassin's Bounty last time I did it. And I busted like two or three people right outside of the final table. Otherwise, I would have been there. But the dynamics of the Assassin's Bounty at the final table when the blinds are so huge is so much fun. Because I remember last time, our shortest deck at the table had so many bounties. He could have doubled all the chips to play and then also been chip leader. And just didn't do that because he was like, right. well, I have like, because he had like 1,300 in bounties alone. You know? And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's always nice when... People leave their bounty chips on the table, uh -huh. and so yeah, you just see this tower of you know what, a hundred dollar chips just yeah. you know, stacked super high. Like, ha have you been running well? I can't quite I know, tell. I know, I know. So uh, Brett, you know, actually speaking of live at the bike, I know that you you, know, you talked about these players versus them. I think we've been we've been talking about it. You know, I don't, I don't think there's anything officially in the works. It'd be great though. I think transportation is an issue, but. To have a group of players who kind of rep the stone side and a group of players who rep the bike side, and then we, we play a stream or two here, we play a stream or two there, and just, just you know, we, we make it fun. Like, right. everybody wants to tune in, we simulcast, like, that could be a blast. All right. And it's like I say, I want as much opportunities for people to get introduced to poker as possible. So however we make that, you know, make that happen. Yeah, it's never a competition, guys. More poker is, is, is better. I mean, yes. period. That's what it is. All right, so King, Queen, three here, Super Rainbow. Brian does connect with top pair. Corey with the next best of it with his queen. Yeah, Brett Green said, I uh, just did the run it up Reno. Yeah, well, obviously, when you're in here uh, for the Assassin's Bounty and all that stuff, that is going to be, uh, obviously, you guys know, April 13th through the 22nd. When you're in here for that, though, all of these same running up Reno guys are pretty much going to be here hanging out. Yep. So it'll be like running up Reno after party. Stones edition. Let's do it. Is that one name? That's off? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so look at this fun little run out here. Running King Jack. And Brian's King's still good. And with the... Oh, it's Trip Kings, I was going to say, actually. It kind of helps out with his kicker issues. Now he splits the King Queen Jack for right. kicker. Loan for Cards is going to be in here saying, I'll be playing the main event for the Spring Classic. Guys, I'm going to be in here a lot definitely during that spring classic so make sure if you come up say hi if you recognize any of us feel free to come up feel free to buy us a beer we will never say no to buying a beer i guess with me it'd probably be a vodka soda but either way let's do it yeah steven i agree with you there are excellent players on both streams um, i love seeing some of their uh their big hand recaps i saw the big huge uh epic cash bluff recently i mean it had i mean it was crazy it had hundreds of thousands of views in like a day or two oh, nice. i mean yeah it was, so i i love it I, I think it'd be great honestly the hardest part is it would be like the players a lot of these players who play you know everywhere and they'd be like well i mean well, where where who do i, who do I play for and i'm like yeah play for whatever you want scu patch just subscribed on youtube what's going on loan for cards is asking what kind of beer do we like uh my answer is typically free cold, yeah free and cold 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 beers yes i just don't like belgium yeast i don't like the clove flavor for me personally i'm not a super i'm, yeah, I'm not a super dark beer guy i you know i, I kind of feel like i'm drinking road tar sometimes at that point all right so zion on the button exercising his rights party 10 7 suited pops it to 40. All 
right, bit of a random dry board here with the ace out there, and Zion does bink the 10, and it's good. So when Mario checks the flop to Zion, kind of surprised Zion didn't fire a bet, but Mario could always be up to something tricky, maybe checking a big hand. So he decided to check behind. Mario fires 45 on the turn. Zion makes the call. Deuce on the river is going to give Zion the check mark. Oh, loan for cards. Thank you very much, man. Look forward to seeing you. What's up? Oh, what's up? What do you think about this game so far? I should have known. Yeah, yeah you got to look. I should have known. See, Taylor, this is what I love about Taylor. He's so quick. Taylor's our booth production guy uh, and poker dealer extraordinaire. And he, uh, it's great because every time the name changes, I just know I'm like, well, Taylor's running here. <laughs> well, here you go. Here you go. This is what happens when I don't lock the door, guys. <laughs> this is this is what happens. I, I, I know. I, I almost I almost didn't change my name until I checked to see if the door was yeah, locked. Yeah. And I was like, nah, it's not locked. Hey, Aaron B says, uh, Ho Garden. I believe I had like a Belgian white Ho Garden. And you're right. That was pretty solid. I don't know if I've had that one. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a beer guy, but I don't know. Have you ever tried uh, Fruly? It's a strawberry beer. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm down with that. Sounds like a good summertime. I, I've had a, I enjoyed like a, I've had like a good like apricot ale too. That was pretty good. But it's like you can't have too many of those sweeter beers. And yeah. Just like, bleh. Yeah. Usually I like when my, when I have like a fruity beer to have like a subtle fruity taste rather than like, <laughs> be like loan a wine for, cooler or something. Loan for cards. You're killing me. All right. I'm out. Well, that was quick. Yeah. Good. Get out of here, Taylor. I'm used to that. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Whenever you want to oh go, Taylor's up, and that's it. You know what? I'm just gonna hop out for the last half hour, let Taylor in here. <laughs> Snarky Penguin 23, what's going on? Oh, wrong login. Uh oh. All right. I thought Taylor needed a little bit. Oh, of uh, I bet. Time. I bet. Let's see who Snarky Penguin 23 is. I bet it's like Lady No Muck or something. And they just said they got the raw and log out. Snarky penguin. There we go. All right, eight on the river. So Brian's four is good here. Oh, the poker boss. There it is. What's Shout going on? What's going on? In the house. Enjoying this good weather. Taking the top off of your car if you can. True that. Yes. I mean, you can just take a chainsaw, even if you don't have a convertible. Just take a chainsaw right to the roof. Every car is a convertible. <laughs> if you, if you have if the you means. Try, if you try hard enough, yes. every car is a convertible. I've been trying to lure the poker boss away from Vegas to come out here and hang out with us, but apparently he's busy with like these crazy couple months of poker right? coming up. Go figure. Oh, my God. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Bam. <laughs> Fixed. Do not look at the man behind the curtain. Don't worry about that. That's what happens when you kick the camera. It's good. <laughs> the snarky penguin. Is that uh, Mrs. Poker Boss right there? How many uh, accounts do they have? Uh, you know, I don't know. They, you know, they, they have, This is an issue. For legal poker, reasons, they have. Account sharing yeah. and, you know, multi-accounting. So over under on how many speeding tickets Sean has already gotten in his new car. I'm gonna set the well, line. When, I'm gonna set the line at two. Okay. So when did he get the car? He got the car. Carry the one about two months ago. Oh. Well, and he seems like a smart guy. Nevada has a lot of open spaces. I'm gonna go with one. Solid. Survey says. <laughs> All right, so eight five deuce here, club draw for Mario. Uh, Aaron with kind of a funky gut shot straight draw. Brian with top pair. <laughs> I said I multi account like it's poker stars. Holla! <laughs> and I can definitely hear the people who announced earlier they've been drinking since 7 a.m. because they are way louder than everybody else in the room. Funny how that works. So now the seven peeling on the turn still gives Aaron, obviously he still has a straight draw, now he's got a pair along with it. Brian with top pair, still the best. Uh, Aaron does make the call ace on the river. Uh, assuming Brian can hold on to this pot, he is the current champ. 550 in there, Aaron first act. Aaron can definitely take the pot away here. Yeah, you know, if he decided to turn his hand into a bluff. You know, he, he checks over to over. Brian, and Brian takes the safe approach and just says, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over. Right. Ha! 
<laughs> All right, Poker Boss chimes in with the answer. Says four and a half tickets, four for speeding and a half because I got pulled over for speeding, but dropped down to just using in my two cell months phone. Since he got the Snapchatting meatball? fat train. Good lord. This is true. This is true. He basically says, uh, Yellow Vet, this is Red Vet. Yeah. Come in, Yellow Vet. <laughs> and then I normally snap back something like, uh, requesting a flyby. <laughs> We're good here. Oh, Stone's Life Poker started following me on Instagram. I really made it. Why well, they, they followed uh, thanks, me? Thanks, Taylor. Oh, my God. Guys, once again, going around these chips here, the greens are 25s, the reds are fives, and the whites are hundreds. The blue chips there are dollar chips. I believe in this particular case, uh, they're pretty much just used for uh, tipping and or buying drinks for your friends, hint, hint. All right, so Dave with the mystery hand, three betting up to 160. Adam makes the call with fours. Adam's been running super pure with his pocket pairs. And Aaron comes along as well with ace queen, same hand, so. Oh man, look at that. Where's the four so both players can battle over Adam's set here? But no, uh, Adam does just slightly miss his set here. Uh, Aaron and Dave both pink and ace. Yep, and Day does have the queen of diamonds, so if it goes runner, runner, diamonds, he has some additional outs. So Day bets 275. Aaron smooth calls that. Let's see what happens on the turn. Not really, short of a diamond, not really a lot of scare cards that could come on the turn for either player. And now Aaron checks over again to Day. Day possibly putting Aaron on a flush draw. I don't even know if Darren, if, if, if Day is really giving Aaron credit here for an ace. We'll see. Aaron, you know, or definitely has some weaker queen or aces in his range, but uh, Day shouldn't be too worried about ace king in the range. So he should be able to beat, you know, or bet uh, three streets for value, which is going to make it really hard for Aaron to make it to showdown. <laughs> Hey, Poker Boss! I'm just seeing your snap right there. I like that. Okay, and just uh, spoiler alert. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw him under the bus. He's totally watching Stones Live in a bathrobe, and I think that should be mandatory. Right. I'm just saying. Just putting that out there. Now this Jack's actually uh, bad for Day, you know, because he's assuming if he has has Aaron beat, he probably has Ace Jack. Yeah. Oh yeah. You no, know, that just makes him so. Oh yeah. So and actually, you know, for Day, it ended up being probably the best card in the deck for him to get to the river, you know, to actually get to showdown. Because you know, otherwise, Day's betting pretty much any other card that comes out, and Aaron's worried about ace-king there, so it's going to fold at least a percentage of the time. Yeah. And the, uh, the obligatory inevitable, I can't believe you play that cheese or <laughs> you play that garbage when right? you both flip over the same hand as the other dude, and you're like, yeah. There. See, my new thing is, you know, when that happens, I go, are you going to say it? Is it your turn? And, <laughs> and half the time, it just throws people that I have wait, no what? idea what you're talking what? about right now. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not going to let you in. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going, you know, I'm metagaming you. Yeah, if you don't know it. Post game, on post hand talk. It's like you try to, come on, man, we're always finishing each other's. And then they're like, sandwiches? <laughs> yes. No, 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 you're doing it wrong. Spaghetti, Lady in the Tram style. <laughs> I think it was it was Adam who was just complaining. He's like those stupid Asian drivers. Obviously funny because he's Asian. <laughs> Aaron B says, "What are the best poker performance enhancing drugs?" <laughs> uh, green tea. Yeah. With extra honey and lemon. I was gonna say hot tea, honey, lemon is what I hear everybody order. Yeah. So apparently that is the the Thank poker enhancing you. performance drugs there. Yeah, and uh, studying. Studying's a hell yeah. of a drug. And cracking out on Red Bulls. There's a reason they give them away free now at the series. They Don't just do like, it. Gamble, gamble. Don't do it. <laughs> there was a guy I played with at the series. We're playing cash out there in the big room on the side. And every time the waiter comes by or the waitress comes by, he's like, yeah, I'll take two of those Red Bulls. I'll take two of those Red Bulls. And every, he would just take them and he put them in his backpack. Sitting next to him at the table. And so I just caught him doing it one time and he looks, he's like, Yeah, you all in? I'm like, No, I'm good right now. And he just opens the zipper with this like snarky grin and he's got his entire big bus of it like 15 Red Bulls in. <laughs> I'm like, Oh God. I hope that he's going somewhere where he's then like selling the Red Bulls.
goals. Yeah, for like <laughs> that's five sub- bucks a piece. That's already subsidizing his buy-ins. <laughs> He's like, dude, I've already stolen several hundred Red Bulls. Middle pair versus middle pair. Harlan does have backdoor diamonds, but not anymore. Well, yeah, so yeah, open-ended now for Adam on the turn. Battle of the nines, and Adam's not really going anywhere here. 70% equity for him. Look how many outs Harlan has at the top, 17, and that's after we already pulled out these other seven outs that were full to pre. Yeah, I think that's, you know, basically the chalk, too. Yeah. And Brick City, Adam seven, actually good here. Nine, Nine what? <laughs> oh crap. Uh, flip them over, boys. No. Nope. Yeah. Seven. Good play. Seven <laughs> I love that right there. I love everything about that. When he says nine what, he's yeah. just like, oh crap, I have to lose if I have nine four. I literally don't even play. Or that, or they both had like nine deuce and nine crap, they were gonna chop. Cool Briz1187, what's going on? Surprise. Uh, that's it. You, you notice that too, like when you needle somebody back and forth, you're like, oh, you got a king too? Oh, crap. And then you sit there and you kind of have this like talk about your kickers before you actually flip your hand over. <laughs> Mario raises to 50. Um, middle position. It's a me, a Mario. This. Mario's just gonna run into setup hands like all all stream is what we're look we're looking at. Every time Mario starts waking up with a hand, starts popping in there, somebody else just comes right. in with a beast. And so it, after a while, he's got to think like, okay, am I getting punked? Where's right. Ashton Kutcher? Right. Because like I, I've been, we've all been in that scenario where every time you're raising, you're getting uh, three bet by random like uh, different players mm-hmm. too. It's not just like one person, right? And you're like, dude, I, do I just run this bad? 10 7 deuce super rainbow here. Great flop for day. You're worried of pretty much nothing. Mm-hmm. Mario's got ace high. He checks over to day. He's going to go check that fold most of the time. And this is one of those scenarios where actually, if I were to get randomly hardcore clicked back by Mario here and I'm day, I'm going to like question life choices. I'm probably not going to go anywhere, but I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to love it. You know? <laughs> Yep, and check that fold. Now, Mario did have some backdoor options. You know, he had the sta- spade draw, he had the straight draw. Yeah, but again, it's just he's not quite deep enough to really give his backdoor draws too much credence. You get gotta pick when and where you're gonna continue with your back doors. It's nice to be in position to continue with your back doors. Yeah, I like to choose my back doors carefully. It, it, you have to, yeah. especially these day and ages. It's true. You never know, uh, <laughs> guys. <laughs> never know if, if you in the back door. Speaking of which, if you haven't downloaded the Stones Gambling Hall app on your phone yet, please do so. It's 100% free in the Google Play and App Store. You can see everything we got going on. Our entire schedule of events coming up. You can book a seat remotely you can see our menus you can do a little dance on there you can see your player points and i actually used night. it today on my way here to put myself up on the list and i almost did the same but then i realized that there was too many people waiting for the game i wanted to play and then i decided not to and then when i got here of course they just started a new game because there were so many players right. on the list that's actually another thing i really love this room super accommodating if you have it you know clearly when you hit a certain amount of players on the wait list like they're like dude they let you know like hey just wait five minutes i'm gonna pop open a new table for you guys you know what i mean like they're they're on it so look at this board here obviously harlan way in front with his jack interesting dave with almost the next best here mario's gonna turn his hand into a bluff here it's gonna work pretty well you're gonna get a lot of people off of a huge range of hands now harlan could be of the stickier variety of people mm-hmm. especially when i believe the uh, yeah the flop checked around so it seems somewhat unlikely that once harlan would bet you know the flop or you know check the flop you know mario then checks the flop as the uh, pre-flop raiser you know that he would now just turn you know start betting like a better hand than the jack 
So I think in this situation, Harlan will probably call, if not raise. I don't know that he'll raise. I, I don't think Harlan's going to go anywhere. I don't think he's going to find a fold at all. The only other thing Harlan really kind of has to worry about is, you know, did Mario turn a set? <laughs> And Harlan's gonna call. Rob Malt in the house. What's going on, bud? All right, three spades on the river. Now this is kind of a weird card because it does complete potential flush draw. If Harlan somehow puts Mario on a flush draw, or vice versa. But no, they're both gonna double check there, and uh, that's it. Yeah, so I think if Mario uh, doesn't want to throw an unnecessary risk there. If he wants to get out of line and start firing in Harlan, I mean, there's so many hands Harlan yeah. could have that crush in there. If he knows if he gets called, he's beat. Right. So and. If Mario decides to shift that river, you know, it's going to be kind of a polarized spot, you know, Harlan is the kind of player that can bluff catch there. So I think when Mario kind of reevaluates that hand, he's going to notice, like, if he wants to sell that story, he probably should have started it on the flop, you know, as a pre-flop raiser, you know, because almost all value hands on that board, you're going to be betting because you know, there's a ton of draws, there's a ton of one-pair hands. You know, uh, maybe Ace Jack. You can make a you can make a case for checking back. Yep. You know, King Jack. Jenna uh, White checking in. What's going on? Game solid. I was gonna say Rob Malt uh, asked, uh, did I miss the fireworks already? Actually, check it out. It quads exactly. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, Adam had quads sixes. He had pocket sixes. Uh, ended up flopping quads against pocket kings. There of it was Corey there in seat one. Yep. And you're going to win the pot a majority of the time when you flop quads. Mm -hmm. Aaron B says, I'd make up money that Harlan could run the table in arm wrestling. Uh, I, I agree. I concur. Nobody's going to bet against you. Yeah, no, I, 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 it's funny. When somebody brings up a good bet, you're like, yeah, but who's going to bet the other side? Because we all want that bet, right? Wrong table. Really? Harlan with eight makes it 50 to go. See, kings never win at stones, man. We know this. Every uh, every other year, they run wild. Yeah. This is just not a good year for kings. So just fold them. Queen, Jack, Deuce. Nothing for Super Mario here. Definitely a couple overs. You can see there back in the purple shirt, that's Daniel. We've seen him a lot on the stream lately. Been crushing a lot of the final tables of the tournaments here at stones. He's been solid. He's been up like... 20 30k and just tournament winning since the beginning of the year and like just like local tournaments too like you know what i mean like not well, they have amazing tournaments out here in yeah. sacramento like i mean i think pretty much every stones tournament like you know this last sundays you know the different events like first place is usually like 10k or more yeah you know and yeah. we're talking for like 300 dollars. that's a good return on your money Run good. So Aaron B is actually saying no, but like we're, we're saying Harlan can take each person one after the next at the table in arm wrestling. Even with the fatigue factor, yes. I mean, dude, I know how hard that guy works out. I, I still like Harlan's odds here. <laughs> like, now, who, who picks the uh, the order? I was going to say, I want you put him up against, if you put him up against the real hard ones at the very end, it's going to be right, a little tough, right. right? But you put him up against the hard ones at the beginning, it just starts just beating yeah. everybody out since then. Crackle, peckle, what's going on? Welcome. Jenna White in the house, tuning in. She's probably tuning in while she's uh, harnessing her inner Bob Ross and painting and you know, another 30 paintings to put up on her walls around the house. Good stuff. Uh, Dave with Ace King makes it 45 to go. Dave C with nines calls, as does Harlan and Adam. To the flop. King high board here, couple of diamonds. Dave definitely connects with the best of it here. Top, top for Dave. Uh, Rob Malt, what am I playing on the stream again? Uh, I would say one of the final tables for the Stone Spring Classic coming up. I'm going to final table one of those suckers, so I don't know which one, but you'll see me. Yeah, and that was a really good board for Day, you know, to try to get value from people, but just nobody really had anything yeah. that connected with that. So ironically enough, I, I'm going to be out of town for a friend's birthday uh, from the uh, April 20th. 
and I'm going to be gone the 21st, and I'm coming back Sunday the 22nd. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to satellite in a couple days early and play the first main event 1A flight here on Thursday, April 19th. And then when I get in, I'm just going to totally like blow by these two days because I'm going to be in Tahoe party. And then I'm going to come back on the bender early Sunday morning, and it's, uh, it's game on. And, so let's and do cure it. your, and your hangover with the final table yeah. win. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's, that's the plan, the strategy. Guys. Or you could do the, uh, you know, the Jake strategy and just bomb mimosas all day and then, you know, chop, chop the, uh, for the win. Where is Sasha tonight? We don't know. Nobody really knows where Sasha ever is. No. Sometimes Sa he doesn't know where he's at. Sasha just floats in and, like, just comes in and crushes for, like, an hour and then, like, all right, yeah. good. He's like, hey, I got a quesadilla to make. All right, so both pocket pairs miss here. Brian's still with the mystery hand, but he does have position, and it's Brian, so he's definitely going to fire a 60 here. This should get through, at least get Aaron to fold. I don't know about... Excuse me, I don't know about Dave. Oh, Aaron is gonna make the call. So I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty dry board, all relatively speaking, with nine, deuce, three. I mean, there's a good chance your fives are solid here, so I don't mind the call by Aaron at all. Dave C now, is he gonna come in for a raise? Yeah, you you have to at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. If if you just flatting, you're almost, you're just again, you're in like finger cross mode, and you give too much potential for so many cards to come on the turn that murder you. Right. I mean, think any ace, jack, queen, king, you hate on the turn. Yeah. Now it's interesting that uh, you know, so we still don't know what Brian has, but that now that he calls a raise, you know, you start kind of limiting his hands. So I think uh, Brian might have some over pairs here. We're uh, let's see how to work out pre. So Brian raised a sixty pre, but he yeah. is on the button. I'm gonna say that Brian has a a nine or B club draw. I think Brian has like queens. Do you, you think Brian has an overpair? Brian, yeah, Brian raised. Yeah, I think he has a lot of overpairs here, actually. All right, let's see if we can see as they uh, shove in the hand here. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, he could have, like, ace-king of clubs. But the problem is, when you get check-raised, you know, and you continue, and then they check to you on the turn, you know, now the board's yeah. paired. So you're not going to continue with your ace-king of clubs there very often. Because, you know, what's check raising you? It's going to be a lot of sets. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, some overpairs. Where, where, yeah, where that kind of So, happened, right? you know, you don't really have too much fold equity. Uh, Rob Malt 725 says, what do you prefer, tower of chips or chipping up with bigger chips? Um, I'll, ta I'll tell you what, I prefer towers, but t to a certain point though, right? You can get out of control. I mean, and, and I've definitely been there. I've had, I've had... To, oh, almost 2k in in one dollar chips and <laughs> it was it. ridiculous wow. it was 40 it was 40 stacked high and it was a big triangle stacked with another 40 40. stack high stacked yeah. with a third 40 stack high and we we, we call it the chin barrier. Don't ever really yes. stack them higher than your chin, and we were at nose status for sure. So, so, and anybody that's seen me play on stream knows I like big, the big chip stacks, and you know. So, well, I did that with one of the last Veronica and friends. You know, just had them. I think it was sixty high, sixty high, sixty high, champagne bottle thumb. Dude, okay, we actually finally are getting a bomb pot action going on. So everybody throws in twenty five here, and we all see a flop. So this puts everybody in that good old rangeless beast category here. Currently Zion with the best of it with mid pair. Donkey Puncher says master C equals master stacker. It's true. I'll take it. He's been called worse. <laughs> That's true too. Huh. Alright, so another 10 here hits the turn. Zion way out in front. So I'm not sure why Mario is going to pick a bomb pot situation to continue with no pair, no draws. I'll tell you why, and watch. This is going to work. I bet Zion gets away. Sure, yes. This works this time, but... You know, that's going to be kind of results oriented. So let, let's try not to be. No, not not resource oriented. I'll, I'll explain why later. I'll explain why after this hand, but I don't want to. I don't want to get into it right now. All right. We'll see. Yeah, results oriented is the epitome of like, show me what the river would have been. 
and he lets it go. And I knew it would work, and this is why. So bomb pots have, you know, let's say you're in a, you're in a pot, and the board and the board texture is on the flop, all suited. People get weird. They start playing a little funky. They're very cautious. They don't play normal kind of their ABC on poker game. Same thing in bomb pots. That's because you're always really, really, really conscious of where you're at in the pot. Because, again, any two cards are out there. Somebody could have the random do six combination that crushes you or something like that, right? And because of that, uh, in a previous stream, I saw one of the players who was actually pretty sticky and snug normally get out of line and make this way crazy check raise bluff on that bomb pot because he knew being a bomb pot, it could get away with it because his range is anything, right? Right. And so that's kind of what he was exploiting there is he knows, at least I know now from doing this stream enough, that in bomb pots, people generally have to be a little bit stronger than they usually would right. to continue in the hand. Right. But Z has been somewhat conservative, and he leads out into the whole field. You know, you do expect him to have, like, you know, a, a pretty good hand. We had a piece of it, exactly what we had. Yeah. Yeah, so Freckle Pucker said the majority of uh, on stream give credit uh, on bomb. I think bombs. Yeah, I think is what he's going for on bomb pots there. Because I mean, it's it's nasty. And so many of these times in these bomb pots, we see players get dealt huge hands where they would never let any smaller hands pre if they right. queens, kings, ace, jack, ace, queen. But all that's wrong. Look at this flop for Zion here. He's got a gut shot straight. Oh no, he's not a straight flush draw. He's got a gut shot straight draw and a flush draw. So checks around Super Mario bets uh, looks like two and a quarter. Yep. Milan Soccer Seven, what's going on? See you over there in Twitch. Hey. So two, four, six, seven, five. Look at this, and Zion definitely coming out with the call. And let's hear for a four. Oh, the next best thing. So here's the deal. Zion just keeps getting more and more outs here. Now you see he's got 12 outs up top, and that's after we actually pull out our grayed out outs, which were cards other people had. All right. So snap all in here, looking for a club five or six. Will he get it? Oh, and he gets it. Mario just not in the run good seat tonight. You can hear it right there. You can hear it. Mario, obviously a very seasoned player. This is nothing new to him. We've all seen Rivers way nastier yes. than this. But when it keeps happening to you consistently throughout one session, it just it can it can be it can be wearing on you. You know what I mean? It oh, just yeah. really can. And it makes you a little you know gun shy as well. You know when you just keep getting hit and run out on. Speaking of which, Lady Nomuk, we were talking about you earlier. Had a blast with you uh, playing on Monday. Very cool. Yeah, Rob, Rob asked why doesn't uh, Z just shove there, you know, on the flop is what he's referring to. And uh, I kind of thought he should too, you know, if you're going to call off two, so if it, you're what, 250 with... If you know you're going to call off, left? Maybe, maybe shove it and then at least you get a little bit of fold equity on right. the other side. You right. know what I mean? So maybe he was just worried that he wasn't going to have any fold equity or maybe he just wasn't thinking of those terms, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the thing is, those are kind of things you start thinking about as you gain a little bit more experience, you know, about actually looking past just your hand and about, you know, what your actions are going to do, you know, to your player's you know, range of hands. Yeah. Hen Henry Pan Panders Dune, I can't even pronounce that, but yeah, it says a uh, nice move, Super Mario. Yeah, I mean, he got it in good on the turn, too. Yeah, it was, it, you know, it's funny. Normally, we, we joke and say that's the scenario that's the case of too many outs. Because I almost had too many outs where I'm like, he, he's not going to hit this because he's got too many outs. Right, too, too many out syndrome. It's real. The math would prove otherwise, but it's, it's definitely real here. So Harlan was already in the lead almost with, well, I mean, not. He was he was behind sixes, but looking good with the only club, and now Binks and Jack on the turn, and that's just going to seal up his hand real quick. And Mario is a little flustered right now. 
Ten. I was, oh, I was just going to say, you know, sometimes when you're a little flustered and kind of been running against you, it's okay to just take a step back from the table, take a quick walk, re-get your, you know, your bearings about you. Yeah. And one thing that's really important, you know, you, you, you got to know, like, your image, how you play. Part of it also is really good to know, like, if you tilt, how do you tilt? Mm -hmm. How does run bad affect you? Some people, when they tilt, they just go into lockdown mode. They don't play any hands. It's great because you know you're not thinking clearly. So the less hands you play, probably the better. Mm -hmm. And other people go into crazy. I'm going to play every hand, super aggro, and just giving it all away mode. So if you know beforehand that that's how you you go, then you need to make sure you're good about leaving the table. You need to recognize until that. You yeah. get that you know under control. I guess some people would say you need to check yourself before you wreck uh, yourself. Your stack, yes. Yeah, your stack before yes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to check your stash before you wreck your stack. Alright, so Harlan checks over to Great Super Mario. My stack. Oh man. Oh god. Bring it back. So really nothing for anybody here. Aaron, ironically enough, actually with a pretty healthy grip on his hand. A couple of overs. Butt's got yeah, the seven. Looks like he's got the big guns here, Aaron, in this hand. <laughs> oh, king on the turn, Brick City. Bit of a scare card. Has anyone eaten a salad? Uh, I had one for some booth run good before the before the stream started. I saw that, that's assault. Oh my god. So Adam here still at Resident Big Dog at 5,500, followed by Day at just about 5k. Corey's still on the short stack. Uh, I'd like to see Corey get a little bit of traction. He's, he's, he obviously ran kings and quads, which sucked, but rebought and then immediately got queens, ended up making a three bet pre and picked up the flop then. But other than that, just can't really yeah, seem really to find some momentum. On. Yeah. Right. You know, in poker has so much variance, you know, like you could be card dead for so long and three hours is just not a big sample size. So, yeah. it's, you know, I always say you want to come to these, you know, do streams, you know, because you can get a lot of education, you know, it's a great learning tool, but you have to almost commit to doing multiple streams. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just because you can run completely hard at over three hours and just play one hand. Absolutely. That. There are some players who are notorious, but I know Azan is notorious for running like garbage on the stream and literally just sitting there knit folding or what it looks like because he's just got absolutely nothing and then the cameras go off and he rakes up like five 10k pots like they're going out of style all right and day has a set on the button you know what's cooler than having a set is having a set on the button straight up <laughs> it helps so Dave makes the call here. Three hearts on the turn does complete a potential flush draw. Both players have a heart. Both players don't love their heart. Dave is like fifth nut high at this point for the heart. A king peels on the river. Uh, all of those cards, that run out sucks for Dave. Dave doesn't really get affected too much here. Lady No Luck, yeah, we had an absolute blast as well. I can't wait to be here again, for sure. Uh, and yeah, coming up, the Vloggers game is going to be a blast. So Dave has 300 there, and uh, correctly, Dave finds a good fold. Kathy Kirk says there's uh, not much over betting the flop to build up the pot with these deep stacks. You know, we it's, it's weird. I, I've, these pots... They seem to be relatively small until they're not. Like, they're pretty small, and then all of a sudden they get out of control on, like, one or two streets. It's a check raise and a bet, a three bet, and a four bet, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, the pot was at 200, and now we're both all in for two grand each. Right. And it's like, oh, okay. And that could be signs of what we were talking about earlier, you know, players just going a little bit more small ball, a little bit more pot control. Yeah. Not trying to get out of control until they really got a hand. Yeah, I just kind of think also... It now every regionally it 
it's very different, right? You know, games in Sacramento are going to play different than Vegas mm -hmm. versus Reno versus L.A. And, you know, bet sizing is one of those things that really kind of depends on where you're at. Like a lot of people in this area like to size a little smaller on flops. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a lot of, uh, a lot of people that are kind of a little bit more try to play in lines of like GTO and balance, you know, they're going to bet smaller a lot of times, you know, because it offers them more opportunities to bet and, you know, to continue uh, betting. And Harlan just turns the straight. And what a river to give Super Mario two pair just to make him pay off. Min Nam just subscribed on YouTube. Thank you very much, my friend. It's very cool. I appreciate having you. Viewers, honestly, is a big part of the show. You guys make it a blast. <laughs> and we've all done that too. How Mario talks to himself. He's like, this is what I'm telling myself. I knew I should have done this. And we've all been there where you have that, that gut feeling that you should bet and you check or you should fold and you call. And then the second you just confirm your own read, you're like, God, why didn't yep. I just listen to myself? And yeah. over time, the terrible that's the difference. Just hits. Over time, you start listening to yourself more and more and more. And that really is a sign of when you're improving your overall game. Right. And you you got to trust your instincts, and those come with experience. Mm -hmm. And you, you're literally betting money to trust your instinct, right? Right. So it's a matter of like, do I really do I trust my instinct for two hundred bucks? Do I trust my instinct for five hundred bucks? Do I trust my instinct for a thousand? You know. You uh, I have to turn my alone. phone off. Wow, Jenna White is being officially cut off of her phone. All right, Lady Muck. Lady No Muck, uh, we do not sell those card protectors, but I know you came in. You played on the stream. You're a big friend of the show. Next time you're in here, let's talk with Justin, see if we can't uh, find one laying around for you. Oh, Queen 7 9, all spades here. Brian binks a pair in a spade draw and puts him way in the lead here. And now two pair for Brian. Get some. Jack on the river. This four card straights the board. No player here with an eight or a king. It's a pretty scary card. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, quick check back by Brian here for showdown value. No surprise there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Corey's like, ah, I'm just kidding. Uh, Captain Kirk, you want to you feel this one? It says that what stakes do you guys believe GTO play should start to take more precedence over exploitation? You know. I don't know that it's a stakes thing. Deep it's thoughts be, by Jack Handy. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be more about, you know, the quality level of players that you're playing against and how many of those players are at the table. You know, so, and, but I think you might gear to a little bit more towards like GTO in like kind of heads up pots against really good players. Now, if you're multi-way against, you know, multiple good players, still it needs to be kind of more exploitative just because I think GTO loses some of its uh, its traction and value in multi-way spots. You know, I think, you know, people pass, probably end up passing on a lot of uh, value. But, it, you know, that, that's kind of a tough thing to say. It's, it's more based on the opponents, but those opponents that are going to be at that kind of higher level. Mm -hmm. They're typically probably like 2-5, 5-10, 10-25, you know, a little, little higher stakes, so, depending on your area. Corey here pops to 45, gets called by Dave C. The flop gives Corey no love of any kind here. King high board, all spades. Corey with no spade, no pair. Dave C, technically a little behind here with only queen high, but he does have a straight draw and a flush draw. So... Plenty of outs there. He bets it to win it. No surprise there. Uh, so it's actually, for me, I think it's one of those things where I talked with Casey a little bit about this the other day, um, and the question was actually asked in a different way. It was basically, you know, at what point would you play more off GTO math-based or do you play more off feel-based? And the answer was un unanimous pretty much between me and her that you have to play a healthy mix of both. I think if you play one way or the other, one extreme or the other, both of those are easily exploited. You know what I mean? And I think you need to, you need really need to, and, and really what happens is, is you kind of learn the GTO way, and then you start going with your gut and learning the feelings way, and then you find this healthy mix of both, and then you pretty much just kind of adjust your bar accordingly depending on, you know, game, game, however the game is running. 
you know, and a lot of, you know, one other layer you want to really, and this is very important to kind of think about is, so every hand you hand, you want to have, you want to think, how many streets of value do I want from this hand? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, you know, based on the board and, you know, your hand versus their range and player dynamic, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, that's a huge thing to be aware of because now you're talking like, okay, so I only want two streets. How am I going to get this to, to get two streets while getting the weakest part of their range, like, to, you know, to get value from that? You know? Yeah. So Aaron here, we can't see his hand now. They were back on the cards. He has too many chips. First uh, of all, problems. A queen 10. I knew we were open-ended. Yeah. So Dave does bet 70. Aaron makes the call here. Now, this is a great card for Aaron on the turn, and it's not all at the same time. So he's thinking this improve his hand because now he has a pair with his open-ended. Unfortunately, this gives Day a super lock on the hand here. You can see Aaron's outs are pretty limited there, uh, pretty much drawing towards a jack-8 king at this point, or another uh, a queen for chop outs. Derek Cole chiming in. I love it. What's up? Derek, another friend. I can never even tell. He's either like sitting here in the room or he's in Vegas. We do love Derek, though. Most poker players can't even spell GTO. Just play your own game. Can we get that on a bumper sticker? You want to get that printed out there in Vegas? I'm sure you can. All right. Uh, three on the river here is going to seal this up for Day. And now uh, we saw Day originally bet. It was, so this has been a check call down by Aaron. Aaron checks again. At this point... There's really nothing I don't think that Aaron I don't think Aaron would triple check a jack. If Aaron had a jack, I feel that Aaron would go for value here on the river and fire out. So because Day now puts Aaron on a missed draw, he's gonna fire out for any sort of thin value, thinking you probably don't have a jack. I most likely have the best hand. Right. So to go along with that line of thinking, like I could I would like to see Day actually size pretty large here. Mm -hmm. You know, so your front door front door Spades miss as or well. Front, front or clubs miss, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, clubs. And air makes the goal. So basically, you're going to be getting, you know, kind of bluff catching type hands. Yeah. And people bluff catch pretty big, you know. So size up a little bit. And I, yeah, I don't think obviously I don't think Aaron was really putting a uh, day on ace queen there. I know the way the action worked out; it's, it's definitely plausible. But obviously, you saw by the call. Right. I think maybe he was putting uh, day on some the exact same thing that day was almost putting him on, which was like busted clubs. Right. Maybe an ace high club draw with some some other big card. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Aaron still calls like 500, 600, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. So I think that they had room for a little bit more value. And uh, a side note for, you know, Derek, I do like that comment, you know, where we talked about most players can't pl spell GTO, just play your game. Yeah. Unless you're playing against Derek, you might want to take some GTO approaches against him. Now people are saying, oh, it's game, 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 th game of Thrones, Game Thrones of is what GTO stands for? Yes. Harlan with aces, it should be illegal to give a player like Harlan aces. We love it. He makes it 40 to go. He's under the gun plus two. Brian finds a call on the button with queen four suited. Jack five deuce, couple of clubs on the flop. Super random dry board. Harlan's aces way out in front. And he's going to bet 60. Quick fold by Brian. Nothing going on. I wish you had something is what Harlan said. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to call with a hand like queen four suited on the button, you might want to have a plan for if you miss. Because you're just, otherwise you're, you're asking a little bit too much of that hand if you're just trying to flop something. I always find it funny when I uh, get shorthanded or get involved with a funky hand, like heads up, like maybe I try to steal the blind with like a king five or something, and somehow I flop like king five deuce. And how do I flop top two pair? How do I flop top two pair with king five? You know nothing, donkey puncher. You know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> All right, so Adam on the button here, three five suited, pops it to twenty. Again, when it's folded to you on the button, open wide. Hey yo, eight jack ten, couple of spades. Day flops way the best of it. Backdoor hearts for both Adam and Day. Clearly, Day in a dominating position here. Both players check. Now Adam gets a piece of it on the turn here. Kind of a weird card because it also completes a flush draw. Check check. And River now we can see Day has the check mark. He's gonna go for some thin value. Yeah, and look at that, it says it's 25. It Ship it. And this is funny, so 
he got he went for the extra 25 bucks whereas a lot of players just check show down there right there so this is one of the things we touch base on this is one of the differences between at the end of the month a winning player or possibly a break even or losing player all those little thin value spots that a lot of people just choose not to take add up very quickly so let's say you got 25 dollars thin value there right let's say he does that three or four times a night and it's where somebody else would have just check showed down right it's 100 bucks extra a session let's say he plays poker five days a week i mean come on yep i mean you can see where that adds up real quick it's an extra couple thousand dollars at the end of the month yep. or if you're me i always choose the wrong time to value but and take I try to go to uh, Value Town, and then uh, at the end of the month, it's why I'm down a couple you, thousand. You, you take yourself to Value I Town. I take myself to Value Town. I, I book my own Uber right, right to Value Town, and I even tip them accordingly. Yeah. You charge yourself your own Uber rates. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, look at this. So nine six four here. Date connects with us four. Pair of sixes for Corey and Carlin with a nine. A queen would be kind of detrimental on the turn. Yep. Love and Harlan Stone's hat there. That was done by a resident dealer, uh, Paul, artist extraordinaire. Oh, seven on the turn. Four seven thinking, why? Why me? Dick Insider, what's going on? What is going on? That is Adrian. He was actually here playing in the, uh, uh, when Vanessa K was in town. Oh, nice. And he played in uh, that game. A lot of fun. So look at these stack sizes, guys. Again, we started with a $1,000 max buy cap, and now we have two players uh, over 5K in front of them. Yeah, not surprised. Yeah, Adrian. Uh, by the way, I did get your message on Twitter. Uh, we'll chat. We'll chat in Discord. We'll talk some more about that. Definitely have some ideas. You hear, heard it here first. <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Lots of ideas. Uh, Captain Kirk says, uh, taking yourself to Value Town is a short, painful ride that we have all been through. Uh, you know, one of my most painful rides is when somebody checks to me, and I call it opening the floodgates, right? Oh, wow, look at this flop here for Brian. Four is full for Brian, but absolutely no hands that can give him any sort of action here. The checks through, which I do like. You know, it's unlikely anybody has anything. Yeah, now ace people do you know play aces, but you got the big blind and on, and the straddle, so they could be just almost any hands at that point. And if they do have trip aces, you're still going to get a lot of them, you know, a lot of money from them on the turn in the river. You know, they yeah. probably might even check raise you on the turn. So that's one of those things where I talk about, like when I said, I immediately regret this decision is when somebody checks to you and you go for thin value and then basically bust out, they, they execute some master check raise on you and they had a monster and you're like, I had so much showdown value, all I had to do was check. And instead I opened the floodgates and started beating myself with a sock full of quarters and it's not very fun at all. Uh, Derek chimes in and says, unless you're playing high stakes versus good regs daily, uh, you should be playing to exploit your opponents. Start with GTO and deviate from there to exploit them. Definitely, I mean, if you're playing with good regs on the regular, they're gonna know, they're gonna know GTO. So they're gonna be like, I can bet this where you should never get odds if I think you have a flush draw in this range, etc. And I don't really think there's not too many people, and maybe probably zero people, that can truly play GTO. Yeah. They might try to implement the concepts or the ideas, but they'll never. They're be. still yeah. making mistakes. Yeah. They're still out of line, you know, in multiple situations. You know, everybody has tendencies. Yeah, unless you're like, um, who was it that was? creepy good with a percentage of Howard Letter was one of them um, who else was really good with a percentage like they basically they know exactly if they put you on a hand they know their exact percentage without even thinking twice about it he's like uh, I, 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 I've heard him correct people like oh yeah I was like 40% to when he's like actually we're 42 I mean like that kind of thing. like no 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 like don't forget that 2% right. you know well that's saying if we're putting people on ranges of hands like we should yeah we can't really uh, get you, that you, again you have to play the, the loose yeah. kind of GTO ish right heavy on the ish with air quotations and a lot of times you, a good way to think of GTO is it's really solid fundamentals mm -hmm. you know and then just kind of you know like I said opening it from there Aaron raised to 40 with the mystery hand here Harlan finds a call king high board Harlan connects mid pair and Aaron, still with the mystery hand, fires 50. And Harlan's stacking out some calling chips. 
All right, to the turn. Two clubs on board. Let's see what the turn brings. A random brick red three is pretty much as brick as you get. That's a good d double barrel by Aaron. You know, because especially against Harlan, he is going to float a lot. Especially Harlan in likes position. to always look up one street because if he picks up an extra draw, right. he wants to come along because I think Harlan really likes the the disguisable aspect of it. Like picking up an extra, now picking up a flush draw on the turn and then hitting a flush. It's like the runner runner because it's so disguised right. and it's so valuey when you get there if, if, the other, if your opponent has anything. And a uh, cool breeze, you know. It was, uh, it was just asking Derek, you know, what the GTO was, not the analysis. But uh, I will say Derek is a very, very good player, very smart. Anything that he says should be absolutely taken. Like the Liam Neeson movie. Taken. Yes, take immediately. It. Oh, my God. What did I see the other day? He says, oh, was, it, was I watching Deadpool? It's just like, God. At some yeah. point, you just got to think after he takes your family after the third it's movie, you, you just probably, you just got to chalk it up to bad parenting. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. All right, so four, five, ten here, Rainbow. Aaron connects with top pair. Uh, almost the best of it if it wasn't for Harlan's bottom two here. Uh, bottom two, solid love-hate relationship. Day is also open-ended with potential uh, backdoor flush draw. Bottom two is... The best horse ever because it's so e it's 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 strong right now, but it's very easy to counterfeit as the board progresses on. Right. I mean, right here on a board of ten five four, generally I'm gonna think my five four is good here. But if the board runs out, you know, jack queen, two pink cards, whatever, like I, then I start to question life. You know, I mean, I just cry call, I check cry check call. That's a thing. You can push the cry call button. Yes. It's real. <laughs> I go. So Harlan, obviously knowing that this is, is is very easy to get run out on, he makes it four and a quarter to go. And Day finds a call. Day knows. Day's going for some implied value here, thinking that if he hits that, then Harlan's obviously got a big hand. He knows Harlan has a big hand, but he knows if he hits it, that Harlan's going to pay him. So that that ace could, could slow things down a little bit here. So Day's going to find a check. The ace is scary, but can Harlan really check here and let Day get a free card? No, I think, again, your your hand is still pretty uh, vulnerable to where you should be betting, you know, here. Yeah. And there's still a lot of hands that can continue. And then, and then if you call. get if you get wicked check raised here, then you can put them on some sort of ace-5, ace-10, ace-4 hand. Right. But until then, you can't check and give them a free card. You can't be scared of a what-if scenario. Right. I don't know if I would go this big that Harlan is going. Like, to me, this seems like Harlan just wants to end the hand. He does. Yeah, you, know, you see this bet a lot where hand. people just bet to try to win it now and the better things to think about is value you know what hands can call and i want to get value from those hands and day let it go obviously day knows he knew harlan was strong in the flop but he felt with the implied odds of basically stacking off against harlan was worth making the call but once you break the turn and put an ace out there i mean you just, there's, there's there's nothing else for you to do i guess it's just time to call it a day Oh, but um, where's my soundboard of cheesy, shitty jokes? Come on, no? All right. It's called your mouth. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, Captain Kirk says, when is Jonathan Little coming back around? You guys are better, though. Thank you for the kind words. Jonathan Little, though, super, super good dude. Uh, I would imagine he'll be back. He's definitely a friend of the stream, friend of Stones in general. Uh, it's it's funny. You know, we, we kind of, sometimes we pull some strings, pull some teeth to invite people out. But then once they actually come out here and they go to Stones and they play for a couple of days, they're asking us when they can. Come yeah, out. they're like, they're like, so when can I come back next? Like, what's going on? Like, Moneymaker basically looks for an excuse to be anywhere on the West Coast so he can yep. just come hang out now. Yeah, and I mean Sean McCormick, you know, yeah. great guy, great, you know, friend of the stream, lives in Vegas, is super busy, and he seems to be out here every other week. Literally, he we talked, we, we talked about the possibility of renting a place out here because he's like, I'm just gonna come up like every month, so what do we care? Right. So Day here pops to 40, under the gun plus one. Gets a bunch of callers here, seven high flop. Looks like Brian's open-ended. And uh, Day, Brian open-ended actually with the most equity in the pot here. Day currently in the lead with two overs. Oh, that's gonna be a solid for Day here. He does connect with his queen.
And watch everybody quick fold for the hills. Run for the hills. Dun, 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 dun. Dude, the new Iron Maiden pin. Oh, I'm so down. I didn't want to go out and spend $8,000, <laughs> but I'm going to go out and spend $8,000. Look up that new Stern Iron Maiden pin. It's amazing. Six on the river and Brian binks it. Binkasaurus Rex here makes the straight. Not quite as disguised as it could be though, like if an ace would appeal because now it's a four card straight on the board. Could actually give him less value if Day wanted to find a fold. Right. Considering Brian has been super silent in this pot until now, I'm gonna give him some cred because it is right in between. There's lots of random like five, seven, four, five hands that would have continued here. Um, and I'm just gonna give him credit for the five if, if I'm Day. But he says, prove it. Yeah, and this is when uh, you, you know, got to be good at just letting some hands go. Yeah. You know, especially it's, you know, check to you on the turn, you bet, they call, then they lead out to you. You know, they don't want you just checking back. They want yeah. to get some value. Yeah. So. And that's the thing is you think, why did you lead into me now? Because they didn't want to lose value and they didn't want to basically have you check back. That or they know that the only way they can win the hand is to bet it. We've all been there. You're like, crap, do I check now because I know it's an insta-lose or do I just go for the gusto? Yeah. And when you say pin, you're not talking about pin like right, but pinball machine. Pin, pinball machines. I actually went to Vacaville today and picked up a Mary Shelley's Frankenstein machine because I'm doing some kind of custom behind the scenes work on that nice. that I'm legally not allowed to talk to until it gets released, but it's going to be a lot of fun. You can't talk to it? Nope, can't talk to it. Oh, man. I do, apparently, they didn't have that, the Alexa, <laughs> hey, Google technology back in the day. Hey, I will talk to a rock. It doesn't matter. Uh, Dan Lazari asks, vloggers lineup question mark. I do not personally have the lineup. I don't know if it's 100% finalized yet. If it is, I know JFK Stones is listening. He likes to stalk us. He might chime in and, and give you a few key players in there. Uh, Zion with tens from the hijack makes it 40 to go. Corey, three betting with ace queen here from the cutoff to 80. Brian finds a call, three-way action. Oh, look at this. Now this is a scary board, we talked about this, all suited, all coordinated here. Zion did bank a set. Corey has a draw, but nobody's got a diamond. Everybody's very fearful of that right there. Yeah, so while it's scary, you know, anybody could have a flush. You still and have Ace a Queen gets it. Oh, and Ace Queen actually gets there. Oh wow. You still have a set. You still need to bet for value because you know, you're trying to get some value from like Ace of Diamonds. You know, some kind of you know combo draw. And again, you know, you check and then that car comes. Well, it was like you're saying earlier. You don't want to check sometimes, and then you're like slow playing, and you're not slow playing that situation. Yeah. But then the worst card just comes immediately, and you're just sitting there yelling at yourself. So a quick add-up of math, the chips on the table, guys. It looked there was about 27K. I don't know, I can only add so fast when I see it for like eight seconds at a time. But it looked about 27, 28K in play on the table. A decently healthy 5-5 game here at Stones. Loan for cards is taking conservative players. You know, we... we it didn't start out that way, that's for sure. It did not start out that way. Yeah. Like I said, you got a, you know, a lot of really good players on this table, so it's going to kind of dictate a lot of kind of plot control lines. And... Mm -hmm. um, all right, guys, we have a new dealer coming in. That is Petey. And you know what that means? That means it's Bompotosaurus time. I say that because it uh, pisses off Veronica, more importantly. Uh, but I believe it's $25 from each player. And we all play it out post flop. So two and a quarter in the pot. Everybody gets a hand. We all see a flop. And we go from there. So it looks like they talked Dave into doing it. I noticed in the first time first couple rounds they weren't doing bomb pots. Uh, they had a couple people say they didn't want to. So Usually when that happens, you, you just keep kind of riding them a little yeah. bit. And it's good for the game to get these bomb pots going. And you know who runs like pure Colombian gold in these bomb pots is Harlan. No exception in this one. He does flop top pair, top kicker here. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> no, wait, what say? They said, slow down, Harlan. He said, this is my first time I've ever been involved in a bomb pot. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, I believe Harlan still has his own command and the bomb pot heard around the world. If you Google uh, Harlan bomb pot, I think it's the top shot there on YouTube. You can't miss it. Ended up being a bomb pot combined with a splat, like a rack attack where they go dump off like an extra hundred or two at the table. There was already six, 600, 800 in the pot to begin with. And then uh, and then it just got super bloated. Ended up with like a 12, 14K pot, something like that. You'll see it on there. I, I basically do the numbers live because the numbers weren't quite right on that. And so we're just adding up. It's like, no, this pot's way bigger than yeah. you think. Harlan does run good on the stream. And then after the stream goes off, legend is, because legend for sure, uh, later that night he rakes an even bigger pot out of the camera turns off for like 20k. Yeah. That's how he fades the IRS there at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A loan for cards this game is technically not capped, question mark, meaning that you can mix up to the largest stack. You can buy up to the largest stack at any point. Uh, so if capped, yes. if by uncapped you mean, okay, if a, guy has, yeah, if a guy has 5k, can I buy in for 50k? No. But you can buy in for 5k every time. <laughs> so open ended here with this board, nine high. Adam with the bottom end of the gut shot. And Spade on the turn is great for Day now, who also increases his draw to a flush draw as well. Bet it to win it. Adam there, technically ahead, but finds a fold to Day's bet. Biggest stack starting this game. This this is what I really like. The biggest stack starting this game was a thousand dollars. Yeah. One so it was capped at a thousand to start, but then it's table stakes right after that. So clearly, what happens is is players bust each other out, double up. Not only does the player who just busted add on normally for max value, but every other player is consistently pulling more money out, saying, "Okay, I'll take another hundred. I'll take another five hundred. I'll take another thousand." Uh, we we've seen this with a lot of these regular players at this table. We've seen players who barely play a hand and they end up racking up an extra five k right. because they just always want to get max value. Yeah. This game, you know, started so the stream started with what almost a uh, 4k big stack, I think, like just under 4k was yeah. a big stack. So, in like an hour and a half, they went from a thousand dollars to you know almost 5k or 4k. Yeah, yeah, so loan for cards, you're right. Yeah, so a thousand dollar buy in, but I mean, it escalates so quickly from there. I almost even shudder to tell people, like, if I told you, hey, come play this game and bring a thousand dollars. It'd be idiotic, and hope it run good in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'd be, I mean, you need, yeah, you need, you need several thousand dollars to, to play this game in any given stage. All right, so Dave C with kings here uh, from the big makes it thirty-five to go. Harlan with eights finds a three bet to a buck and a quarter. Now Dave, I like this flat by Dave. It's his hand is so under repped here. I think he could check, and Harlan's gonna bet. Oh God. Harlan binks a lot of eights. I was gonna say he could check on the flop and have Harlan C bet this all day and lay his own price, but this is not a good spot for Dave C at this point. Welcome to 2018, where kings are, do not run well. Two in the pink. What's going on? So Harlan bets 150 now. Back to Dave. Oh, poor loan for cards knows it. He's like, okay, bye bye, Dave. <laughs> And uh, back to exactly what we always say on this stream, kings are no good at stones, and this is no exception. We've seen kings get murdered by sixes by binking quads tonight. Now eights flops a set and has kings severely on the ropes. How do you like that? Flop a set, get check raised. Yeah, what's up, shocker? What's going on, I, like, nice, man. I personally just like to go full Trekkie. <laughs> Live long and prosper. So Dave does raise to 400. Now, if you're Harlan, this is dream scenario. Dave did raise pre. I mean, the only hand you're possibly even considering you're worried about would be would be a set of queens here if you have pocket queens. But considering Dave didn't click back pre, Harlan's not putting him on queens, but then again, he didn't click back pre with kings either. But now this is a really sticky scenario because now if you're Dave, that's a hefty, hefty bet from Harlan. And you're thinking, okay, do you have better than ace queen? Because I, I murder ace queen. But I know you don't have. Now you get now. Oh, good, nice fold by good Dave. Fold. Nice fold. Good for you. So many players get married to kings and aces and can't find a fold. With the amount Harlan re raised there, I don't think Harlan's ever making that move with less than the ace queen. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, just, I don't even think he. he I don't even think he does it with ace queen. That's, no. that's what I'm getting at. So. I love the fold by Dave there. Good for you. Yep. 
So we have Donkey Puncher and Shocker in the stream. I feel like my life is not complete. Yeah, wow, Lone for Cards is wow. Dave is a good player. That was that was a solid fold. So many players fold. get just sucked into the vortex only because they can just shock it up if they lose like yeah, Oh well, I'm at Kings, what are you gonna do? Guys, that's what you could do. You could fold. You could make a good fold. And Dave did a prime example of that. It's hilarious. So many so many players. Agreed. So many players just talking up to like, oh my god, like how could I fold that? You just, you just fold. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how you fold. Yeah, I definitely could have raised free flop. I think that's the only other way, you know. Caritas chimes in and says, I lose all my chips there, and that is why he is the tournament director and not the tournament grinding player. That is correct. Lover Card says, yeah, 99% of the people get stuck with kings there. I totally agree. Especially being that he underrepped his hand by not re-4-betting pre-Harlan, right? I mean, he's just like, how can Harlan ever put him on kings there? Harlan right now, if they go back and watch that, Harlan's going to be like, holy shit, you had kings? Why do you fall? How do you not pay me, is what he's going to say. And we have another setup hand here. Trip Jacks with the Battle of the Kickers. Nice blink on the river, and this is a spot where Brian can really hammer. And this, we talked about these pots being small until they aren't. This could be one of those things. Actually, I don't know if Harlan, Harlan's not strong enough to come in for a re-re-raise. I, yeah, I, th I thought I'd be paying you off. You can hear him. I'd rather pay day off. I love Harlan. I love Harlan so much. No. You're not folding. <laughs> nah, he'll call for the 110. Yeah. Jack. Yep. <laughs> Look at her look. <laughs> That's just good sportsman right there. Brian throws it in and just looks at Harlan because honestly, it's not even about winning that pot. I'm winning this reaction right here. I want to see the look on your face when I show you this hand. I want you to feel bad as you take my chips. That's awesome. And I love, and you know Arlen's a good guy when he just says things like, oh man, I, I had a feeling I'd be paying you off. I'd rather pay off a day. I mean, this is basically your, your overpriced home game here. Caritas, lock it up. You don't need to go find the Hydra clip. Everybody's like, oh yeah, this is the one time you uh, final table the Hydra out of like 600 people and you bust it out like first hand. Yeah, okay, shit happens. I also came to the table with like one plaque, all right? Well, it's better than me uh, making last longer bets with people and then lasting about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, you know, it, it's funny because I'll make uh, last longer bets. They're like almost the size of the tournament buy -in. So then when your buddy busts out and takes a cooler out yep. the beginning, you're like, I'm free rolling now. Yep. I've made a last longer bet with somebody where it came down to me and him heads up to the final table. And oh. so not only are we playing for like now we're we're playing for like pride points times a million. Alright, so Adam here does make a raise with ace ten. Zion finds the call. Zion with the best of it on the flop here, big key mid pair, connecting with his nine. Yeah, just know if uh, we do a last longer bet, I'm probably putting an additional bounty on you. Nice. Oh, I like that. So you're gonna hedge your you're gonna prop yeah. bet, you're gonna hedge your prop bet by telling people if they bust me out. Yep. There's a price on my head. I respect that. I'm not kidding me, man. Harlan got the run good salad. Yeah. You saw that. I think he realizes he's already had some good run good, so he's just trying to make sure it continues. Yeah, Shocker, we are definitely uh, open to ideas. We're always looking at making upgrades. We've made constant little tweaks. If, if I wish we almost had like a change log of what we've, I mean, what we've done since day one. Like, I mean, it's, it looks so fluid and streamlined right. now, but there's been so many little tiny additions over there. I mean, hell, I remember when we got the, uh, the avatars for the actual poker players and their pictures up there. Right. I was like, this is great. Why haven't we had this before? I mean, it, it literally went from, you know, the, the weird, like, dim lit show, like two people just watching poker talking about it. So that's actually like some solid yeah. stuff here, man. I mean, 
Like I said, even early on, they've been mm -hmm. they have really good professional quality streams, and yeah. like I said, it's just these little tweaks just to keep making it better and keep streamlining the process. Modus operandi at 35. What is the value of the orange chips? Uh, I believe they might be a little slightly off color on your screen. Those are the red chips. Oh, the, the oh the orange salmon chips. There, those are two dollar chips. Yeah. Uh, those are normally used in like the uh, Omaha games, like the 816 games and stuff like that. So you don't have as many chips on the on the table. Those are the uh, salmon colored chips. And one thing that's actually really cool about Stones and them doing this this stream is they don't charge for viewership. You know, yeah. they do it here yeah. just to put out a good product for good entertainment. You know, and a lot of other you know streams they you know they they're trying to make a profit off of it. Yeah. You know, and Stones is just about hey, let's you know we love poker. This is what we have going on. Check us out. Absolutely. Well, you know, Caritas has said it multiple times. He said, as long as I'm in charge of this, it will remain free. So that's why we're looking at firing him immediately and making all the monies. No, he's, just he's going back to Starbucks. Actually. Back to Starbucks. It's weird. He only goes. We end up rehiring him, and he gets fired and rehired a lot. So he goes to Starbucks. He works for like a week, but then he comes back, and we're like, all right. That's why he posts things like sometimes I, I wonder if the casino misses me too. In, in all fairness, he so interviews needy. really well. He interviews really well. <laughs> All right, Adam here with Queens. Under the gun plus one makes it 40 to go. Harlan finds an easy call, as does Zion. Brian gets out of the way over Super Mario. He's got some fun suited diamonds. All righty, look at this. Ace, 10, eight here, couple of hearts. Not the flop Adam was really hoping for, but still in the lead. Always scary, especially in a four-way pot when an ace is on board. You gotta assume one player has it. Yeah, it's very likely. You know, and then that you again. This just meant people are like, oh god, of course the ace comes. All you're doing is readjusting. You know, the level, the number of streets of value that you want from your hand. And likewise, you are the pre-flop raiser. So I mean, you could basically see bet and rep the ace anyways and if nobody else has the I mean, you'll find out who has an ace real quick at that point they're either going to raise or flat you and then and you're most likely going to isolate it down to a heads-up scenario on a board like that when there's just one random ace you're going to isolate it to just who says they have an ace essentially and i would highly encourage that you don't do that <laughs> yeah do not do that don't try to bet people off of an ace <laughs> Because then you're going to get exactly what we saw with a player like Zion earlier, where they're just quick calling you because they're like, look, I just hope my kicker's good, whatever, but I have an ace and I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And most people don't drive to the casino to full top pair. Justin Caritas busting out uh, Jerry Maguire quotes. Those are banned. Sorry, sir, not allowed. Try again next time. I love it. Harlan and Dave's like, come on, man. They just, they, they needle each other constantly. I mean, I love it. They're like, they're, they're brothers fighting at home, but you just can't get enough of it. It's so good. Yeah, both guys are really fun guys to have at the table. Yeah, you know, just super talkative. Mm -hmm. And just, they make the, a good table dynamic. Janae Smith, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, so, 10 high board here, all spades. Adam, the only player with a spade. Looks like it checks through around on the flop. Brian's Jax still playing this hand really, really, really passive for Jax. Uh, didn't fire the flop now with an over peeling on the turn, not firing that either. He's check calling Adam's bet. Adam pretty much firing with air, looking for a spade. Uh, brick on the river. Yeah, now I'm just going to snap check back when Brian checks here. Uh, decides to turn his hand into a bluff. I think didn't think the pot was big enough for him to, you know, think that he can get a, a small value bet through as a bluff. Yeah. So you can see here are two short stacks. Mario and Corey both have had a rough time finding some momentum tonight. Both players beneath a grand. Everybody else uh, pretty healthy, like one and a half k above or more above that. And Adam, Adam's with that bet, though. I think he's just trying to fold out ace, ace of spade type hands, you know. He's not trying to fold out any pairs there. Once again, you guys are watching Stones Live Poker. If you haven't done so yet, click the follow, heart, subscribe button. We're here with you every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, and outside of that, all of our fun events we have coming up half of April, we are broadcasting. So definitely click that follow button and hang out with us.
So Dave just limps his ace 10 of hearts. He's perfectly fine for him to raise too. All right, I'm gonna go take off for a minute. Maybe Taylor will hop in here with you. He okay. likes to do that sometimes. Yep. He's the official seat warmer. You know how like celebrities right. have seat warmers at the uh, the Grammys or whatever. So you put yourself in a difficult spot if you're Dave here. You know, if you would have just raised pre-flop, you know, uh, Brian just calls, and now you probably see the turn uh, for for a cheap. It would likely go check check. So when you are limp calling it kind of puts Brian in the driver's seat it's going to make it really difficult for you to continue and you know to actually realize your equity of the hand as you see right there playing out of position is very difficult so you don't want to make it more difficult on yourself by you know, giving people multiple ways of betting you off your hand Derek says, those overhead lights must be extra bright tonight. What's up with all the sunglasses? Uh, maybe they just think that uh, their future is so bright, they gotta wear shades. I mean, they're playing on a pretty good stream. All right, Taylor, we were just talking about you. So, so I actually had to, I wasn't gonna jump in the booth, but I had to because I literally just spent, there's three, so there's three stations back there, right? Right. So I was in my station and then I hopped over to the action tracker to do a couple hands. Right. And then I chopped over to the, the cameras, <laughs> did a couple of hands, and I was like, well, I might as well jump in right. the booth and do all four positions in the last 10 minutes, you know? That makes it good, man. I mean, just we need to have story. a well-rounded, and we haven't been in the booth together, so. Well, there you go. Well, that's a good reason. Now I'm here. There we go. All right. So Ace-King versus Jack-9, both brick. Ace-King has the betting lead. He's going to continue. Wow. Action. <laughs> no, this game's been pretty good though, right? Like, right. Like, we got some solid players in this game, so it's it's very interesting to see how they how they can mix it, mix it up against each other and you know make good plays. Yeah, and that's what I was saying earlier. You know, a lot of times you don't like when you get a lot of good players in the game, the pot sizes themselves aren't huge, and I think a lot of people, yeah. you know, kind of get lost they think well the pot size isn't big so these hands aren't all that interesting but when you know the dynamics of you know these really good players you know going against each other you know is very interesting and the pot sizes themselves are going to be a little smaller because they're making less mistakes yeah they're putting they're they're only putting their money in when they're when they're certain that's where their money should be going right with you know good equity and like i said you know you gotta decide how many streets of value you're gonna want, you know, and against really good players, a lot of times you don't want three streets of value because that means you're overplaying your hand. Exactly. Train's not back in the booth, don't worry about it. He's not creeping over in the corner. Look at him, you can't even see his face. Corey flops open ended. Scary. Actually. Corey doesn't have, have too much, uh, you know, in his stack left, so I won't be surprised to see Corey just kind of make a stand, you know, at, with this hand. Yeah. And he bets, and Brian folds. So Corey finally gets Respect. a little bit coming. Sometimes you just gotta win that first pot. No, then all of a sudden you get traction, and you just start winning every pot. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna let Train jump back in. All right. Thanks, sir. <laughs> he gave me this look like. I mean, you don't have to. Screw you, man. Get out of my suit. Why is it like warmer than when I left? Uh, you haven't even sat down. No, trust me. I could see. I could see the heat rising off. It's weird for me too. Well, why does it smell? <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. Lock the door. Lock the door. Uh, Loan for Cards asks, are you guys planning on getting Twitch sub emotes? I, I, that might have came up before. We can ask uh, Stone's Life Poker. We can ask Taylor and Justin. I want to say yes. 
Oh, hey, I'm just back in time to see Justin Caritas post the link about me busting out in the Hydra. <laughs> you know what, dude? I'm gonna go bink off like a World Series circuit ring, and I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna get the freaking video clip, and I'm just gonna like play it on it. loop. In I'm gonna, I'm gonna hack Justin's Tesla, and it, when he boots up his car, it's just gonna show me. The other thing you can yeah. do is uh, do that, and then part two of that is get a shirt that you know has some uh, video capabilities on it, and it's just that link. Yeah. yeah. Now apparently all you need to do is scrub to 38 minutes and 54 seconds where I bust out. Thanks a lot, JFK. That's literally what he lives for. That's he, his job is just needling me, and he, he does great. He does a great job. At he needles it. everybody. I'm down for Twitch sub emotes, though. I, I don't think that's too crazy for us to do on our side. I'd definitely be down for that. Yeah. I mean, we, def we definitely need one with you know, like the Jake, just a big old bushy beard. Like, oh, and that's yeah. it. No face, not nope, nothing. Just a beard. Yep. The beard of destiny. Maybe someone peeking out behind it. Mm -hmm. So that river was solid there for eight jack. He did. He missed a straight, but he did pink the eight for the best of it. Took it down. I'm locking this door. I can hear JFK. He's too close. He scares me. <laughs> Uh, he's been known to come in the booth and stab people. Yeah, you know, it's just a light shanking. It's never really like a lethal stab, but it's it's enough to hurt. Right, and that's the point of it. It requires stitches, you know. Well, have you been snitching? The snitches <laughs> get stitches. And we also dig ditches, so uh, we gotta be careful. And we put it up on the twitches. <laughs> Donkey Puncher says, oh, I see. 38 minutes, okay. Sorry, I'm non-GTO. <laughs> well played, well played. Looks like they may be popping in another player, possibly, in the list. Speaking of the bearded wonder, I'm staring at the Jake from here. Rocking his hey, team. My old seat. Rocking his team, run it up. Oh, and it looks like they have salmon chips. Are they doing a little 816 little Omaha? No, he, he came over from the Omaha game. Oh. All right, King 10 4 here on board. Top pair for Zion and Harlan so with Zion, 4. You want to go ahead and bet at this point on the turn? You definitely know, check the turn. If you're going to check the flop, that's fine, just for kind of pot control. But right. on the turn, we got to start firing. Yep. There's some. Especially considering you have position on Harlan. There's no way Harlan ever double checks a hand that, that you can't beat with your king. Right. He just, he just not. I mean, and he's calling go. the turn there when you bet. Yeah. And he's probably going to call it River as well. Corey still hasn't really had too much going on tonight. You know, he's ran into obviously a couple tough hands. And but the problem is you kind of gotta decide. You can't let your stack run down too low because then you double up and you still don't really have anything. It's like if you're gonna stay in the game, you need to like be a part of the game. Give yourself that ability to double up and have it be meaningful. You know, and I know this is kind of the dynamic. Sometimes people don't want to buy in multiple times, but it's a stream, so you want to play for as long as you can. But you think about, like, if you're playing to try to learn, like, what are you really learning if you just got it all in with, like, 20 bigs? Yeah. So, really not much going on for either player here. Completely random board versus their hands. And they check down, and Corey smiles, and is like, my eight high is not good. We can chop. Cool. Yep, chop. I'd like to watch me bust out of the Hydra. Let's see what I look like. Yep, this is it. Bye. Bye, me. Oh, yeah, I ran it right into Jax. Yeah, I'm the best. My ace five into Jax. <laughs> I don't know how you don't beat Jax. I probably I probably yelled the hand that always finds a way to lose and I, you can't beat it. I probably yelled one time several times there. I don't know. <laughs> Adam raises under the gun plus one to forty with the King Jack suited. Harlan with Ace King on the button is going to three bet. Uh, to to hundred more. Where's that king only on the board? Nope. But not the worst flop for Adam as far as he's yeah, concerned. It's a good flop yeah, for it's Adam. A couple yeah. of over straight draw potential. Especially with the hand that's likely dominated pre-flop when you're calling out a position to, yeah. you know, a three bet. 
to be able to flop a draw to the nuts. You're you're okay. almost looking for a queen and hoping Harlan has a hand like queens or some sort of like right. straight or like flush draw, you know. I mean, hell, they look at that. All, all four, our four top stacks all have well over 4K, well over 4X the original starting max buy-in of right. this table. And it's nice you can hear a little table chat. You know, you hear Harlan say, "You never give me any money." Yeah, I love Harlan's it. Like, what are you talking about? I give you money I all give the you time. Three street, three yeah. street. I love it because this is, you know, these guys will go at it on the table. Somebody will felt somebody else for like five grand, but then you can all go out like bowling afterwards and, you yep. know, whatever. I'm buying you dinner and a beer. You'd be like, you better. I just gave you like 5K, <laughs> right? dude. The least you can do is buy me a steak. Thank you. Mo honey, mo problem. See, he knows. He knows what's up. You got to respect that shirt. That's Biggie the Bear. He knows all about it. What's that? What's that line? Yeah. Honey gets flies, but you get more flies being, you know. I don't know, but wherever that's going, I need to hear the rest of it. We got to figure that out. All right, so uh, Aaron with eights makes it forty to go. Everybody wants some, and this is you know kind of a domino effect where, especially at a table of good players, where they all feel that their post flop play is really strong. Once it, players start calling and calling and calling, then it snowballs. Then everybody's range opens up to be so much weaker, and they can still call because they're getting great value there. And Dave flops top two. Which is great for him, you know, because Mario happens to have top pair, so Mario is continuing his poor run. I know. And is gonna probably have to call off. Now, if he knows Dave, he knows Dave's, you know, a little bit on the tighter side. Oh, he, he, good fold on Mario. That's a go. Doesn't want anything to do with that. I like it, and you know why? Because I think Mario would have gotten in much more trouble if he had a hand like King Queen. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but there, with Dave betting so strong, betting 200, basically pot of a value pot size bet there. I mean, well, not value, but just a pot size bet. I mean, Mario's like, uh, he's got to have stronger than I have. I mean, he, he knows he's basically drawing, and he has to catch up at that point. And Mario's texting his whole uh, contacts of, how bad am I running, How bad guys? do I run? Tell me. Kablai13 says, Somebody. where's Harlan? Let's go, Harlan. There he is. Seat eight. And Harlan's been going. Holding down the fort, yeah. Harlan's got one speed. It's not fast, it's not slow, it's Harlan speed, okay? Right. And it's forward. Oh yeah, Har yeah, it's not back. Harlan knows what Harlan wants. Super Mario popping 40 to go here from the small blind. Adam has fours. It's a fun little turn of events. Everybody else on the table wanted nothing to do with it, and it just turns out being the small blind and the would have been, straddle. Yeah, and Mario would have been fine just to take it down. Oh, look at that flop for Aaron. He flops the stone cold nut straight. Not much going on for Adam. Super Mario checking here. Uh, has a pair, potential running diamonds. Yeah, Aaron, I, I would never check this if I'm Aaron here. I'd fire it. Again, the board's too coordinated. There's obviously potential flush draw out there. I want to get value, and any hands that have any sort of draws here are going to give you all the value in the world. Uh, that... Not a card he wants to see. It's not a card. It definitely... It it, it undisguises Aaron's hand now because it's it's it's, it's a four-card straight on the right. board. However, for Mario, this puts him open-ended now with his pair. Yeah, and, and obviously, you know, you can still bet for value because that does give a lot of two pair, you know, hands now. So. And there we go. So this pairs the board. Uh, it doesn't really change much here in this particular scenario. Mario's checking. If Aaron bets light enough, pot's at 520. If Aaron bets light enough, he can probably maybe get a value. That's two and a quarter. Um, I just don't know if Mario can call this here. Now, I mean, you, at, you this, at to, this point, you you're, you got to be putting Aaron on pretty much like a busted diamond draw. But you got to you got to factor in you know the tilt factor. Yeah. Like when people run bad, you know they tend to call a lot too. So you got to bet pretty thin against those players. <laughs> Cider says them. Cider says stones copyright cold nuts. I think we might get sued for some copyright infringement there. I'm just <laughs> trademark infringement. We're just throwing it out there. Like the ice cream shop? No, nah, never mind. Right. Nah, nah, nah. We can't. We just can't. 
Once again, you guys are watching Stones Live. If you haven't done so yet, click the follow, subscribe, heart button, all of the above. We're here with you three times a week, but most of the time lately more, and probably even more than that soon to come. So Especially this month. Yeah, definitely. Definitely sign up, get notified. You know, actually, it's really nice. It blasts a notification right to my phone. It's just it's like, boom, hey, Stones Live is live on YouTube. So even when I'm not in the booth, I'm like, oh, yeah, holy crap, that's right. I mean, I forget if I'm not in the booth, too, and it just pops up. And it and actually it goes right on my TV now with my Chromecast, so it's great. And I'll never even know what day it is, so it's nice to get, for me to yeah. get those reminders. All right, so Aaron with the mystery hand here. Uh, pretty coordinated board. Ten jack, queen, couple of diamonds out there. Yeah, it's going to be hard for Aaron not to connect to that. Yeah, a Aaron, bit. Aaron bets. And Day, I mean, that's one of those boards where you either have a piece or you you're, you have nothing. And right there, Dave was on the nothing side. Yeah, of it. and that's not really the board that you're just going to start bluffing. No, right? yeah, that. Okay, on examples of boards where you could get away more often than not by just firing out a bluff bet and getting everybody to fold, that is the exact them. opposite of one of those boards. Yeah. That's like, hey, they're gonna call me with like half the deck. I was gonna say, I'd have a harder time finding a hand that I can't call you with <laughs> right? than, than I can right there. And they happen to have it. Yeah, exactly, and just luckily for you, it was day. <laughs> Helen comes along with a baby deuce four suited. Zion comes along with seven deuce suited. I love it. Oh wait, did Zion muck? Oh man, I really wanted Zion to come along with seven deuce suited. I guess it was just wishful thinking for me. Adam gives what the heck call. And look at this, a baby flush draw here for Harlan. It's because he ordered that salad, man. And killed every leaf of it, good for him. So uh, Aaron checks, day checks, Harlan bets 25 here. Really not much to continue on for either player. And it's a good fold by everybody because, you know, they know the way Harlan runs and they don't know what he has, but they know he will get there by the end. <laughs> exactly. I think I, I bring this up a lot every time he plays, but it's funny. Every time, you know, I was in here with Kelly Winterhalter, I think she said it best. She says, you know, play with Harlan at Poker Night America and, and, and all the time, really. Played with them a lot. And, and it's really funny because Harlan ends up on the river with some crazy hand, and you don't know how he got there, and he shouldn't be there, but he's there, and right. it's the winning hand, and it's totally good, and you're just like, I don't know what to say. I got nothing. <laughs> some people just, just hit, man. I know but, that's but that, the strategy everybody wants to hear. But, but then again, you know, I, I brought this up before. I mean, Harlan is the epitome of what I call organized chaos. He's not just like a sporadic gambler, right. right? I mean, he knows when to get away. He knows when to actually save money. I mean, he knows when to make the money for sure, but he knows when to actually save money. It's crazy. Did you make the lineup tomorrow? Yeah. Did you? Wanna play with Cat? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you should try that one, Mario. I don't even like that place. <laughs> I don't even I don't even like that place. Do you say who does? <laughs> oh my god, funny. Okay, so four six seven here on board. Dave C currently the best of it here with his top pair, even with the ten. Uh, gives Harlan a flush draw. And Day a flush draw too. Oh Dan's a flush draw with his pair. And I mean, they both have uh, a pair of flush draws. And Dave running for the hills. That's that's actually a really, really pretty tight fold for Dave there. It's only a $30 bet when you have top pair on the flop, and the turn really didn't change much. Donkey Puncher says, do you guys notice that the flop runs out to a dragon or panda very often? Uh, I believe you're talking Baccarat, and that is above my pay grade. That's a scary game for me. That's where people go to dump lots of commas. Right. And I don't even know how to spell Baccarat, so I sure don't know how to play it. Yeah, there's a lot of C's, there's a few A's, there's an R in there. Right. It sounds like algebra to me. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know how to spell that either, so. Right. <laughs> so we'll have a straddle again in this hand, like most hands. Adam raises Jack 10 to 40. 
A day call, a uh, full day is 10. And if you're going to call with the 5-3, uh, you might as well flop an open end and straight draw. And now this is a board that you're going to expect Adam to probably bet two streets, especially when the top pair uh, pairs the board. Now it makes it unlikely that, you know, he's calling with seven, so, you know, he's going to be like pocket fives, pocket sixes, and those are going to be hard hands to continue calling two streets. But since he does have the straight draw, he should, you know, he'll probably continue. Here we go. It gets through. Yeah, pops about 200. Adam fires 135 and a quick fold by Zion there. So there's, I didn't, I, I lost count there for a second. I only got the, the four, just the four top stacks out of the 21K. So the game is definitely getting deeper and deeper. Uh, cribbage is pretty fun. I'm really horrible at it and I need help like making sure I count all my points right. Justin Caritas is a very good cribbage player. Somebody just told me recently that my niece is really, 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 really smart. And I was like, well, I know that. And they're like, yeah, but did you know she like plays cribbage and she can already play like open face Chinese poker? And she's like, five. Nice. Fallen. Give her a chance to pay for her own college. I know, honestly, I really want to harness it. Well, she's now old enough to wear I can do card tricks and she understands like right. that how is that my card that shouldn't be my card and so the look on her face like when I say okay this is not your card and then I flip it over and it's her card she just like <gasps> she freaks out it's great yeah we're gonna I'm gonna trust me I'm gonna get her trained up to be a card player of destiny she's gonna be the one that's like an online poker like phenom and she's 12 <laughs> she, we, she can only play in Europe and right, crap right. you know <laughs> That should be my goal. I'm just gonna like, that's it. I'm just gonna be her manager. Just oh. gonna train her into a poker beast. I thought you were gonna say you're gonna have like a bunch of kids that are like, yeah, I'm just trying to, <laughs> yeah, try to help that one. Guys, I have, like a, I have a ring game. Uh, Max Buy-in is like seven Tootsie Pops and <laughs> you can't be older than 10 years old. That right. sounds super creepy. So we're just gonna table that whole conversation. <laughs> but <laughs> nobody thinks like that here. So I think uh, Mario added on a bunch of hundreds in front of him. We'll see if once we get a little uh, better view. Because right now it's just shiny. Yeah. Can't quite tell if they're green or white, but I think that they are hundreds. Only when it's 30k or more. Bombpotosaurus. Bomb pot. All right, so that is, guys, for those of you new to the bomb pot, if you don't know, now you know. 25 bucks from each player. Everybody gets dealt in. We go to the flop. Game on. Two and a quarter in the pot. Who's got the best? Dave's got a flush draw. Zion, the best we can see top here pair. with top pair, yeah. And we know from before he... Well, he bet out with a six last time. I think then he was in late position, and, you know, and this time he's in early position checking top pair. Yeah, those are hundreds in front of Mario. And it's gonna go check, check. So yeah, so now we've breached the 30k mark. We have breached the 30k mark, guys. About a half hour left in the stream. You are watching Stones Live. This is a 5-5 five, five, no limit game. Yes, and I expect that this game's gonna run for a while afterwards. Oh yeah, absolutely. I know that there's already a healthy amount of people on the list. Uh, guys, if you're anywhere around, you can use that app and you can hop on, you can see our list, you can see what games we have running, and you can sign up right there. Donkey Puncher, time to drop the kids off at the pool. I see what you did there. Take the Browns to the Super Bowl. Have a good one, my friend. Good evening. Or you can bring your phone to the pool, you know, poolside, and <laughs> watch. 
Uh, I prefer that you don't watch me from the bathroom, actually. That would be my preference, but you oh, do that, you. Does he go in the bathroom? Oh, oh I never knew that. Right. Mario here raises to 60 with Jax. Harlan finds a call with... Oh, let's listen. No fold equity by bet 40. No fold equity by bet 40, so I got to bet 60. Now, Corey here... He's kind of on the short stack, obviously. He's been getting beat up. I think that for him, that was kind of a... He was thinking about shipping in or folding it there. He found the fold. Like I said, he's, he's he going to have nines, to make yeah? a stand. He yeah. had nines? And the nine's going to be Watch. Oh. Well, it's maybe enough for Harlan to continue for a street here. Super Mario with the best of it way out in front. He bets another 60. 55. Harlan makes the call. Seven on the turn here. If anybody's capable of having that 7 in their hand, it's Harlan, and Mario knows this. But I don't think he's going to slow down too much. Maybe. The king's on board. He's, he's a little scared. I mean, you don't even really like a call from Harlan here, but he's going to continue. and Because and, he knows if he checks, Harlan's going to bet it no matter what. I'd, betting when a 7 comes. Wait. So it's a, there's a bet sizing thing here, too. You know, Mario bets 55 on the flop and then bets 80 on the turn. A lot of times you see someone like do that, they just don't want to check. They don't want to let, you know, the other person yeah. just bluff them off. He goes 105. He... Yeah, he finally beat me. Do you hear him? Harlan knows he's beat. He's going to think about it for a minute, though. But, and and it's funny because it. Harlan has, I think, the hardest time with these, these like, bleeder bets. The $105. He's like, He wants man. to see it. I know. He wants to see it. And Harlan wants to see it so bad, it's, like, worth the $100 to him just to see it almost, you know? I got counterfeited, he says. Uh, he shows it. He, see it. he calls it. I love it. I love how Mario says you got a seven. A king wasn't even in his range. He said you got a seven. He didn't care about a king. He didn't ask if he had a king. Said no good. He knew it. Yeah, see, yeah, Mario, Mario had a really good grasp of where he was at that hand. He said I knew you had a 10, 100%. <laughs> Did you hear that? That's great. He said you got the absolute maximum value extraction there, but you almost screwed it up with that extra five on the end. Betting 105 instead of 100. That's funny. I like it. That's real talk. Once again, guys, Stone Spring Classic coming up. Uh, I don't know if you guys have plans for April, but you do now. Yes. April 13th through 22nd, nine days of full-on degenerate. Spew your face off poker. Get in here. What are you waiting for? Normally, spewing your face off could be considered as a bad thing, but in here... It's encouraged. You can't give me any for the With game. chips, not actually vomit. Don't do that. That's just weird. Unless you give me the chips first, and that induces vomit. Yeah, no, I, I will cover. I will tip and the hell out of the cleaning lobby. staff. If you just dump off like 5K to me, like I'll typically, I'll take care of the cleaning staff. They can right. clean all that up. We're good here. Yeah, I'll, I'll tip the, the cleaning staff while you go get more chips. Yes, true. Because we're nice, we're nice people yes. like that. So the the turn actually brings the flush out and gets there for Brian. Super Mario was really just like check passing this hand. He was wanted nothing to do with this, and he still wants nothing to do with it. He's gone. <laughs> Brian makes a backdoor flush to not get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there wasn't really too much action on that. I really hope we can find some luck for Corey. I know he's uh, he's definitely not had any momentum or traction tonight. He's down on the short stack here, just uh, a little under 300 left in front of him. I know he's probably in for the original 1K. I think he rebought for maybe another 800 or something like that. So he's definitely looking to uh, start Operation, what I call Operation CDU, complimentary double up. Operation Comeback starts with the win. Operation Comeback Kid. All right, David Ace Deuce suited is going to come along. He's going to make it 25 to go. And Dave is just about done here. <laughs> Corey's looking at his watch. How much longer do I have to deal with this? Corey's like, come on, guys, just give me something. And when you give me something, give somebody else something I can actually get yep. paid, please. Super is, Mario is with quadruple too much. Yeah. Than I asked for. Super Mario with tens from the big three bets to 145. Day feeling a little splashy. He's gonna come along. Wow, God, I swear, pocket pairs just attract overs, and they attracted all of the overs for Day here. So Day does have position on Mario, which is 
great for him right here. Mario bets a buck and a quarter. Now, if you're day, we're going to flat this here, and he sure does. Oh, that's going to seal up. Kick. Any kicker issues day once thought he had is null and void now. This actually gives a backdoor diamond now uh, for Super Mario. And he checks, because Mario obviously now at this point really wants to get a free card and bank that diamond. Uh, Mario knows it's, it's highly likely, being that Ace let out and then, uh, I'm sorry, that Day let out and then flatted Super Mario's raise, that it's, it's likely that Day has an Ace here. Now Mario's got a redraw, uh, and it does not connect. And that's actually not a good card for Day. You know, now he's thinking that they might be chopping. Yeah, that it, Day does not like to see that at all. But again, you still if, need to if, put him in. well, yeah, if Mario's checking this to you, there's no, I mean, you're going to bet it all day. And Mario, with a quick call. Dang it. He just wanted to make sure, man. Got to keep him honest. That's a healthy little pot for Day. That's going to put him as our resident big stack at the table at about six grand. And Mario's just not running well. No, dude, Mario and Corey both uh, having a really rough time tonight. Zion's been involved in a lot of hands, but I think relatively held his own so far. I, I think stack-wise, he's kind of pro on the... I don't know. Let's look at our cash win command. Let's see what's going on. I don't think Zion's really stuck, and he's been involved in a lot of hands. Um, actually, Zion's... Z no, Zion's... It says Zion's up 880. Harlan's up 1100. Brian's up 2.3k, but those all can't be right because we know yeah, I think, some people are up heavily here. Yeah, I think... Uh... Z added on that we didn't catch, mm -hmm. you know, because he, it was like he was pretty short stacked and then he had a good healthy stack and he didn't win like a significant pot at that yeah. point. I'm sure he's, I'm, I know he's won some pots since then, but I think, you know, he might still be down a little bit. So Brian from the button, Jack 10 suited, pretty solid hand here. Makes it 60 to go and everybody else finds a fold. He's talking about that river cart when he had that ace deuce hand. He's like, God, it was garbage. All right, let's try another one of these things. All right, we're gonna try another one of these sweet and spicy Skittles. Something tells me I'm gonna end up sitting on the toilet for like nine hours and be like, it was those sweet Skittles. Heat. Sweet heat Skittles. I almost reached for him. Don't do it. Yeah. I grabbed my hand back. Kings for Harlan. So the <clears throat> and Corey just gets jacked. So oh he man, Corey! Damn it! That's rough. So Corey here is going to make his last stand with Jax against all players. Of course, Harlan wakes up with Kings. Right. Even Harlan says something about the run battle. Three times. And again, though, we've seen Kings go down in flames twice tonight. I'm going to run it twice. Remember, you can run it up to three times on the live stream. And the first board is going to be in favor of Harlan. Kings will be good. Give him a jack. Even Harlan's rooting for a jack. There you go. Give him a jack nine. Oh, my God. Corey, my man, Corey. Corey. What can we say? Had a bad run. Yeah, got yeah. nothing. Not, not Tori. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, Corey, dude, you played solid tonight. I mean, well, dude, come on. And then, of course, I mean, it's just like the ultimate needle from the poker gods at the last hand. He runs Jackson to Kings. He's yeah. like, come on, guys, really? Yep. At least it's like cooler me in a different way. <laughs> Don't just like make it so anticlimactic. Loan for cars knows what's up. Dropping the tombstone ref. Feels bad, man. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, if they call me for seat open and I saw the crap that Corey just went through, right. nah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm yeah. good. Anybody want this seat? No. Anybody want this seat? No? no? Okay, I'm going home. That's a fun flop here. 
Got Dave flopping the middle pair, and I think that's the best of it. Yeah, Dave's open-ended here. Three on the turn. Super brick. Got some of that sweet heat. Woo! It smells so sweet. Oh, man. Should it burn when I eat these? Asking for a friend. <laughs> Don't worry about That's that. That's what she said? Damn it. I'm about run out of the bricks, and but the river does bring a completes a potential flush draw here. Which should probably shut down the betting unless someone wants to turn the hand into a bluff. God, a six would have been so great, it would have minted Dave straight and give Harlan a set. That could have been some fireworks. We are always rooting for the most brutal cards. You know, I feel like that's the same reason like people watch NASCAR, right? They're just like, hey, we don't want anything bad to happen, but at the same time... And why people swim with sharks. Well, yeah, we and... totally... We're, we want to see, like, the crazy car accident, yeah. right? So that's kind of what... Like, that's like what everybody in here is like, what would just be the sickest turn card that would give everybody, like, top two pair and a set and a flush and a... Like, yes, yeah. I want that card. Put that one out there. Mario is moving into Dave's seat. Mario just wanted to get closer to Harlan. He wants to be able to elbow him in the ribs for every time Harlan gets there. Wow. Boom, Jack-10-3, couple of clubs here. Action tracker is catching up here. So it looks like uh, Z has open ended if he and made it straight if he made it to the flop. No, it doesn't look like he did. Mario has the flush draw with a pair. Nine of clubs would be a money card for Mario. Mario Kart looking a lot like Dave in his pictures. <laughs> and Dave uh, gets her with Broadway for day. And Mario just continues to have really nothing going on, can't really make anything. Everybody gets there. And it doesn't really matter what CD City. <laughs> Super Mario now taking up two positions at the table according to our chip count. I find it's best when I do that so I can check raise myself. It's really easy right. to trap players when I play on both sides of them. Well, and, and it's a good idea to play multiple spots at the table because you get more hands, a bit more chance of, uh, you know, of winning. Absolutely. And you hear a lot of like collusion, you know, like high handing where yeah, like yeah. someone someone bets, the other person calls, the other person raises, then they re-raise and pulls out the... Yeah. Now you can really do that yeah. with expertise. Let's talk about pot control. And for those of you just <laughs> tuning in, we are absolutely full of crap. You cannot play two positions at the table, but it sounds like fun. Uh, Rep and Tiny's Excite Bike shirt yes. there. Good for you. Fantastic game. Uh, Days Tower O Chips, just his white, like, tower just keeps just keep rising. Rolling. Just keeps rolling. He's going all the way up. That should be like a song. It sounds catchy. Yeah. Should be one. Hmm. Maybe I should make another one. No. No? No. Just, no. just, just the one. Gotcha. I mean, you know, nowadays with, uh, you know, the ability to just put everything straight out online, you don't even need to put out an album. Just put out a song. Mm -hmm. It's catchy, it hits, you know, and you get paid for it. See, I think we sucked in Jenna White. I think she threatened to leave some time ago and, and said she had to shut off her phone, but now she's still here, and she can't go anywhere now. Pack her bags for guilt trip because there's only 14 minutes left. Well, if, if, if I'm watching the stream, you'll notice a lot of times I'll say goodnight like three or four times. I just want people to pay attention. <laughs> and I say these things for, you know, Look at me, attention. look at me, yeah. Hercules. Tiny, affectionately one of those guys you call Tiny because he is not... <laughs> good dude, though. Had him on the stream a few times. Super good dude. Uh, Queen Deuce for Brian is a monster. Zion, though, with a spade redraw. He 
Brian is playing this hand for Israeli Ron. Wow, Israeli Ron would be proud. Can we get a screenshot of this so we can tweet it to Israeli Ron, please? I need a screenshot immediately, Taylor. Queen Deuce is real. Oh, put a jack or something. Oh, there you go. Carnitas! So, oh, Carnitas on a fries gets a follow. Thank you very much. So this is a spot, you know, a lot of times, you know, this happens, right? You have a big hand, somebody leads into you or bets super, super small. And you're like, well, what now? How do I handle this? Yeah. What you should do is just treat it as if, like, you know, like they didn't bet at all and bet, like, raise to whatever size you were normally going to bet. Oh, well, Jenna White literally had to turn off her phone because she was on a plane. The plane has now landed since we've been on the stream. God, is that how yes. much, is that how time passes here? And, and I went up in the sky, I came down, they're still here talking about poker. And JFK says, the plane. Mm -hmm. The plane, the plane. The plane, the, the plane, the plane guy. So Brian bets 200 here. Zion pretty much just saying, uh, do you have it? I think Zion could find a call here. Uh-oh. However, Zion he, might. He's, get, he's getting that little shifty He's getting look that full posture. He doesn't like He's going to call. Yeah. He's going to call, but I'll tell you what, Zion looks like he was pretty close to folding. Um, sometimes I see people get shifty like that, and it's like they might get in a little raise, and I'm like, they're like, they're going to start making a move. Yeah, and then I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This just this went weird real quick. This went sideways real quick. And I'm this like, is... yeah, and then if I'm sitting there with Brian, I'm like, oh, don't move. Just let him do it. Just let him do it. Please yeah, just, just let him finish. Okay. Go crazy. It's easier if you don't struggle. Wait, are, we, are we talking about poker? And then, and then that's when you're like, oh, God, please don't raise. Oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that was one of those inside thoughts. You weren't yeah. supposed to hear that. Harlan has a dirty stack. Come on, Harlan. We expect more from you. Yep, Janae Smith is like, wow, Queen Deuce. Uh, we, we mentioned Israeli Ron, if you're familiar with uh, Live with the Bike, Israeli Ron. He's famous for playing Queen Deuce, and, and it's synonymous now with Israeli Ron, actually, right. Queen Deuce is. So every time we see Queen Deuce, we, we got to give a shout out. You got to harness your inner Israeli Ron and see if you can make it work. Obviously, Brian did just that. Definitely a poker legend. He bought him for 3400 Guys, don't mind me. I'm just pulling up the Stones app and actually putting my name on a couple of these games here. So when I hop out, I can just get right into a seat. So Brian has top pair, now turns a flush draw to go with it. And Harlan looking has a gut shot. Nine of hearts would be terrible. And nine, nine just gets there. And Brian knows it's Harlan that went to the river, yeah. so he might just check fold. That's great. I literally, I just added myself to the wait list using the app, and I can look up and see it update on the board. I'm just waiting for them because they're going to have a seat open. They're going to call me in the next five minutes. But guys, just, just, can you just put down All chips right. and give me five? All right, so Harlan, yeah, nails this all day here. And Brian's ready to fold. And we just need, we need that picture of Brian's face when he see, you know, sees Harlan turn over his hand. Takes Brian on just a light day trip for lunch to Value Town. Just went there for a sandwich. They have a great deli. Yeah. Going to Value Town, it's like an hour away. We'll come right back. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Wow, booth man on point tonight. When I ask for a screenshot, I certainly receive it. Thank you very much. That queen deuce will get Israeli Ron super happy. He dreams of it at night. He, he <laughs> sleeps better when somebody shows him some queen deuce love. I'm waiting for them to yell. Train for the one three, and I could be like, Yes, I like. You lock it up. He's always David Lane in the house, just in time to squeak a few hands in before the end. What's up, David? We've already seen quads tonight. We've seen kings get kicked in the teeth two or three times, and then unfortunately. Every hand kicked Corey in the teeth two or three times. Yes. 
day super healthy on the chip side of things here. 6,300 followed by Adam at 5,200. Um, Adam hasn't been super involved in too many pods tonight. He's been playing like pretty, pretty, pretty standard, pretty snug. I mean, he's been involved in a few, but no yeah. crazy monsters though. Yeah, you know? Adam's definitely you know, a little bit on the tighter side. You know, he's looking to just kind of pick his spots, and he just knows you know people are gonna overplay their hands. So when he's in a hand, he wants to make sure he has a lot of equity. Oh, absolutely. It's not a bad strategy. Probably how he crushes you know large games. On the regular. And those, actually, that kind of strategy, if you can work your way into those large games, those large games are usually very splashy. So if yeah. you have a, you know, a game that just is kind of make hand get paid, you get paid. Make hand get paid. Poker is easy. It's an easy game. Here is hand. Pay me, please. Yes. This is my asking price. No bad beat jackpot, unfortunately. Kings ran into quad sixes, but uh, had nothing other than just themselves just, just a the lonely kings. pair of kings man baby here i believe is any quads are better beats as long as both cards play and brian is tired of folding thinks his eights are good they are let's see if he can call the river bet he should be able to after he, yeah after he calls the turn bet and the two just pairs Stone's menu to take home with me later. Like, I, I think I'm gonna take a breakfast burrito. I did that the other night, and it was a great choice. Not only that night, because I definitely had a few today, but the next morning, oh, leftover yeah. breakfast burrito was great. Nice. It was the win. Yeah, see, so even David Lane calling out the Excite Bike, right? Tiny with a winning shirt this evening. Yeah, it was a fun, fun game. I play that all the time. Looks like we got a new shooter coming to the table here, seat three. Don't recognize them from the hat. We'll see if we can uh, get a better shot of them here shortly. Day with aces. Uh, Brian raised 25 from the cutoff and aces in the big blind for day. Merry Christmas. Yep, three best to 115. Now this is probably an okay hand. It's so, like, you can, you can almost see the, the, the talking between them. Let's see what they're saying. They're needling each other already so bad back and forth. Thank you for your monies. Thank you. <laughs> Donation accepted. Yeah, I think, uh, again, you know, Brian's going to kind of same thing as before where, you know, he called with actually, I think it was Queen Five of Hearts again, you know, and didn't really have a plan for post flop. You know, he's yeah. just kind of hoping to flop big. Yeah, so I think if he removes some of those kind of hands or decides to play them a little bit more aggressively, you know, a little differently, he's going to show a little bit more uh, improvement to his overall game. <laughs> Number three, is, and we're, his name is, we're going to go with, is You Junk It. You Junk It. Comes in, raising. That's been a really good seat right there. Listen, did Mario say that? You're so <laughs> sick, Mario. You junk it. I wonder if it's a business. Maybe he's got like a uh, like a garbage hauling service or something. Maybe. <laughs> of course, Mario with the needle from it to his old right. seat. Oh, it's a great seat. I, I should have never moved, dude. You're going to love it. Mario's like, 
I lit 2K on fire <laughs> in that seat. <laughs> the, the worst thing that can happen is if, you know, you junk it just goes on a massive run. Oh, I was so like, really? Oh, really? You know, we talked about this the other day in the booth. We actually touched on a lot of subjects when I was in here with Casey. And one of the subjects being seat changes. And so somebody in there had asked, um, uh, seat three, no, it's not Corey in seat three. I don't know. Um, so anyway, somebody had asked uh, in there in the chat about when do you when do you decide to finally change seats? When do you think your seats run cold, this and that and everything else? And I think the general consensus was the majority of the time, I'm very rarely changing a seat because I'm car dead. I mean, you might ask for a wash or sort of maybe a set of change or something. I mean, after hours of death, right? But with that being said, I'm really normally only seat changing if I want to get position on like looser players. That's when I'm seat changing. And so there was one time where I followed a player who shall not be named, but is known for being a very loose player, gives you lots of action. And I and, and they would keep moving around the table and I would take the seat right next to them every time. And they didn't even pick up on it until like the fourth seat move. And I never move seats. And the fourth seat move, they're like, man, you just like being close to me. I'm like, yep, that's clearly what it is. Yeah, I love you. I miss your musk and your yeah. cute smile. So obviously, you know, you want position on the players to have position on. You know, like I said, if you're seat changing, typically it's, you know, because you want, you know, for, for position uh, purposes. But yeah, you definitely don't want to be moving too much because you don't want to piss them off and be yeah. like, really? Yeah. Like you're like you're hunting me. You think I'm that bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah. you don't want to like. You can't make it super obvious. Right. That's why I wait a sec. I'm not the second he says that to you. I'm like, oh great, I'll take that one. I'm yeah. just like, oh, you know what? I think I'll move. I'll take but, that one. And if you have a good maybe, dynamics yeah. with that player, you know, like say if me and you were at the table and I was doing that, you know, yeah. to you, and just you know, like we can joke around, and be like, yeah, I'm bum hunting you. Of course I want position on you. You're gonna give me your whole stack. Yeah. And then it's, you know, you can make it a little bit fun, but yeah, if it's just some big, you know, you know donator, you gotta, you gotta kind of treat so, him with respect. So Tiny Pops with Ace King here, Harlan, oh, Harlan does get out of the way, actually, Brian makes the call. Brian flops a straight draw, uh, Harlan, or Tiny's hand's still best. <laughs> David Lane, uh, you and everybody else. Looking forward to the Mimi and Burton on the stream of the 5-5. Very, very fun. Our next Vloggers game is going to be off the chain. I think our last Vloggers game was like, a, hey, we're going to try this out. And now I think all the Vloggers want it right. Yep. And it's so cool, too, seeing all their footage get clipped together after the fact. Yep. So you get to watch the same game from six, seven different perspectives. Yeah. Bike life dope era. I love Tiny's shirt. Tiny's a win in the shirt game. That watch is not tiny. Nope. That watch could be uh, several buy-ins in this game. All right, so guys, it is about 10 p.m. I would imagine this might be our last hand. So one last time, if you haven't done so yet, click, follow, heart, subscribe, all the above, and uh, we will be here with you. Yep, make sure you get notified when we go on. That way, you know, we're live. All right, so Aaron here, under the gun, plus three, finds a raise to 40 with ace nine. Mario makes the call, as does Harlan and Brian. Everybody wants some. Look at this, 3 3 10 here, couple is of diamonds. It, is it a last hand of the night if Harlan doesn't just flop like something monster? I love if Harlan has the worst of it, guaranteed he'll always bank a piece of it. Right. In this case, a super large chunk. Duck Papa chiming in says, When is the vloggers game? I'm not entirely sure myself. We'll go ahead and get those dates in there for you pretty shortly here. Harlan raises to two and a quarter. Cajun Dragon, what's going on? Says, I suck at poker and Rochambeau. <laughs> yeah, I played a game called Drink Rochambeau. Oh. And I got really drunk. That sounds like that escalates quickly. Especially when all you do, because when you're talking, I was just throwing out scissors the whole time, not even paying attention. <laughs> Why am I drinking so much? Oh my god, that is all the way. Uh, Sounds like Poker has chimed in. Looks like the Vloggers game is the 18th. April 18th. We will be here. We will be watching the carnage. Because mm -hmm. all those guys, you know, they want to put on a good show on top of oh, it. Oh yeah, no, they so. they do. And actually, last time we watched the Vloggers game, it was really funny. I believe it was Poker Crowd. You know, they have their streaming gear set up, and they have their, their GoPros, and they have their little tripods. And so every time Poker Crowd had a big hand or a big piece of the board, he's just like, I mean, talk about the ultimate physical tell. He's just busting out this tripod and camera and setting <laughs> it on the table the best so right. we're definitely looking forward to that once again guys that is april 18th coming up uh this friday the next show we have here for you is going to be with casey and brent in the booth it's going to be our uh, higher limit friday game so 
definitely, definitely tune in for that. I'm Justin Kelly, along with the one and only Chris Glasgow. You guys are awesome. We'll see All you right. later. Thank you.